Well, hello, everybody. I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome to another live stream. This is the first big live stream on my main channel. I feel like I've been saying my first new live stream so much because I've been doing a different one on different channels. So if you haven't checked out my other channels, be sure to look up those as well. But for everyone joining today, I think it's quite obvious what I'll be doing. I'm going to be ranking genealogy websites. Uh, so before we jump into everything, I think I'll just kind of go through and say hello to, to a bunch of people who are in here. Um, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of people joining in the next few minutes. So, uh, hello, Steven. Thank you for joining again. And Evan as well. Hello. Ah, Brian from How We Got Here Genealogy. For anyone who's not familiar with his channel, go check him out. He does a lot of uh, Canadian genealogy and a lot of uh, Scottish genealogy and a lot of the <laughs> combination of both. Hello, Carol. And uh, hello, Matt. Hello, MR. <laughs> All right, well, some more hellos. Kind of click through. So, all right, so for anyone who's not familiar with uh, what I'm going to be using today, I'm actually going to share this in chat, the, the link. And so this is through a website called Tier Maker. And I think a lot of people have probably heard of it or at least seen Tier Makers if they aren't familiar with it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I need to share the screen. Um, so here we go. So here's here's the Tier Maker. Um, I need to make sure. There we go. I want, to, want everyone to be able to see that. I want to turn the banner off. And then, oh, you can just barely see it. All right, we're going to make it so we can see the website so i'm gonna go through the websites that they have here but there's definitely some that i'm going to be adding in let's just let's try to make it a little large i know i know it's gonna be really kind of hard to see make your make your computer uh screen as large as you can if you're having trouble seeing um so i was trying to figure out what the best way to go about this was because the way the website says it is just choose your favorite genealogy websites which there's a lot of ways to look at it you know favorite in terms of like i have the most fun on it or favorite in terms of i use it the most or favorite in terms of just quality or you know i don't know so I figured when I go through each website, what I'll do is I'll consider it in terms of a few different things. So one will be how often do I actually use that website? So there may be websites on here that are great websites, but they may get ranked low just because I use them so rarely, or obviously there's the never used option uh, right here. Uh, yeah, I think, you can, yep. You can see that so the you know a lot of will fall into that but i also want to then rate things on the quality of the website so i, I guess a better way to use it is uh user ability I'm, I'm like trying to think of the proper term uh for it that they use when they talk about marketing and stuff but um basically how user friendly is the website how easy is it to use is it like really difficult or is it very straightforward um, and then I'm going to rate it on how helpful it is genealogically, I, I think, um, which I guess that'll be kind of an interesting ranking, which I'm not even sure <laughs> what I mean by it anyway. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So what I think I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with DNA companies just because, yeah. So... They have 23andMe, Ancestry DNA, uh, Family Tree DNA. I'm pretty sure I saw my Heritage DNA on here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. My Heritage DNA. Um, but then, and then there's GEDmatch as well, but then they don't include um, Living DNA. And then they obviously don't include a lot of the uh, smaller, lesser known 
DNA tests like Wee Gene or 23 Ma Fong or uh, Genera from Brazil or, you know, stuff like that. But I'd never really use any of those anyway. Um, so to start out, 23 and Me. And 23 and Me is kind of a difficult one to think about because part of what I have to consider is what they've done recently in terms of making their site taking down a lot of tools basically uh, i think everyone kind of pretty much everyone here probably follows dna testing stuff and knows about the 23andme breach that happened recently and you know there was a lot of worry about things and they started to basically block a lot of different tools that were some of the tools that i felt made 23andme so great um so the first thing that i said that i would consider is I would consider how often do I use this website? And I use it pretty often. I have, I've tested through 23andMe because I, I pretty much tested through all of them. And I'm on there a good amount because myself and just a few close relatives are the only ones on there. I don't have my parents on there, which I'll, my parents are on all the other websites. I have uh, one of my grandmothers on a good amount of the other websites. Uh, but not 23andMe, but I do have a lot of cousins on 23andMe who are only in 23andMe, which was is one of the big things about 23andMe, is they have a very large database, and most especially, it's a very large database of people that aren't going to be found in other databases because 23andMe, like Ancestry DNA, is a company that's very common for people to use and forget. Whereas with some of the other companies, uh, so like, you know, if you're going to be doing family tree DNA or my heritage DNA, even, I feel like those have a bit more of a sway to them in the people that use it, you know, family tree DNA, you're getting a lot of really in-depth users, especially the people that are using the Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA tests. But then with my heritage, you're getting a lot of a broader range of people with just their, their reach with European, uh, uh, people. Uh, so there's, for me, I get a lot of Ukrainian matches, Romanian matches, Russian matches, other Eastern European matches. And that's probably where I see the most matches that are outside of the U.S. And what I like to say, I guess, the general English speaking world, U.S., Canada, England and Australia, New Zealand, basically the kind of main areas that Ancestry sells to. And I think 23andMe. So main thing <laughs> after after rambling for a while main thing is that i do use it a decent amount i'd probably say at least once a week maybe once every other week but I'll, I'll, I'll just say once a week so that's definitely going to be kind of higher up there so it's probably going to be at least b tier now the next question is user uh friendliness and i think it's a f decently straightforward um website I think some of the advanced tools are a bit harder to kind of understand. And a lot of that is that they're, you know, their focus is the health and the traits. And they kind of, I, in my opinion, they seem to use the ancestry and genealogy community more as a place for, for them to get more sales really. And, you know, it, it certainly helps them a lot, but in what they've done in recent years, it certainly feels like they aren't considering the genealogy community much with that. And especially with, yeah, I completely agree, the paywalls. They did the 23andMe Plus, which I forgot what it was that they put behind a paywall, but it wasn't much and it certainly wasn't worth what the cost was. So I think it was a monthly thing, but I could be wrong about that. Um, in talking about that, I should mention for anyone who's not familiar with Roberta Estes of DNA Explained, she wrote some really great articles just going in depth about that. And she really verbalized a lot of the feelings that I think a lot of genealogists feel with 23andMe and, you know, how we've put so much effort in getting people to test through 23andMe. It was kind of one of the big websites a lot of genealogists pushed for a long time. And then 23andMe kind of hasn't really gone along with helping the genealogy community and then the other thing to think about too is just the sense of um, them blocking a lot of the tools recently so i think they blocked the chromosome browser which was one of the big things you know ancestry doesn't have it all the other websites had it and 23andme's was pretty decent but i, I i'm pretty sure they kind of blocked it 
Um, and then they also, I think, blocked the shared match view, which was one of their best things because only 23andMe and only MyHeritage for the longest time were the companies that had advanced shared match viewing. So when you look at a match, you could look at your shared matches with them and it would show not only how much you're matching the shared matches, but how much your other mat that match is sharing with the shared matches, which for like endogamous populations, I would use 23andMe all the time because for me being Jewish and dealing with the endogamy of Judaism, or <laughs> that's a weird way to say it like that, but you know, dealing with that endogamy makes it so that looking at those shared matches becomes a lot more difficult without having what we both match so i could then pinpoint what matches were the best matches by seeing which matches were matching me significantly and them at a similar amount and then those matches that i actually that technique helped me solve a couple of different things but now that's not not available uh let me see what uh, a bunch of people are saying right now yeah, I completely agree. The more paywalls are just annoying. I couldn't. I understand they they need to make money. They need you know they are a business. They need to survive, but it definitely feels like they're kind of just just trying to figure out any any little way to kind of get get more revenue. Um, yeah, I do hope that it is temporary. I think I, I, it is definitely because of the data leak, but I do hope that it's temporary. I think. I forgot, I think my heritage had put some stuff uh, behind a paywall and they limited the amount of matches you can see in like a day or something. Um, but I think those are down, but that was also because of the breach. Um, interesting thing about the breach, if anyone's not familiar with this YouTube channel uh, called, actually, I, I, I wanna say it's called Ordinary Gamers. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm saying that right. But it's with this YouTuber uh, named Mudahar yeah, some ordinary gamers. And he did a video actually talking about the 23andMe breach. And while he definitely leans a bit more to the side of avoid DNA tests because you just don't know what they can do with the, your DNA tests, which, you know, there is some truth to that. He goes in depth into the breach and actually shows like what some of the people are saying is being sold and what was actually leaked. And it was quite interesting so i i suggest what uh checking that video out i actually thought about doing a reaction to that one um what do you think about GenieNet stopping their dna matching um i mean it's kind of sad just because the more databases the better and GenieNet hit um you know the french population which is not very well represented in dna testing because of the laws in france uh, but, you know, there's obviously a lot of people with French ancestry who have DNA tested. And so GenieNet kind of, I think, helped fill a little bit of that gap. Granted, it was mostly, you know, it was just people uploading from elsewhere. So you can find those people elsewhere. But, it, you know, I, I never found that it was um, useful for me. I uploaded some of my family DNA tests to it. I uploaded some different clients to it. And none none of the cases I ever found in any matches that were of any decent significance. Um, let's see. Yeah, if Ancestry added a chromosome browser or some other advanced ways of comparing matches, I think I'd forgive them the paywall since it would likely answer all the questions I'm researching now. I think so many people are wanting that chromosome browser and... I mean, we've been asking for it for years. I actually made a meme all about that, which I'm not I'm not going to try to describe. It'll take me 10 minutes. But, it, you know, it, it's one of those things that they've said it's mostly because of privacy reasons, which is understandable in a sense. You know, if you have a disease and you see the variants that you have connected to that disease and then you find a DNA match and you share DNA at that same spot, then you know that they have the same variants and they thus have, you know, higher chance of having that disease. And so there's, you know, there's that sort of thing to consider. Um, but I, I, I personally don't see that as, as big of a deal as I think a lot of people do, especially because it's, it's so difficult and it to decipher that kind of stuff. And it's also, you know, variants just give a hint. 
not it doesn't tell the full story and they're always looking and finding new variants or other variants that they thought might have been you know connected to this weren't really and you know the 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 science is always updating with it um all right so let's let's go back so 23 me so i use it about once a week user friendliness especially genealogy community related i i, I think it's on the low end um, one tool I do want to talk about is their family tree tool, which they rolled out a few years ago. And it's very interesting because it's one of the only tools I know of. I think it's the only tool that does kind of what it does, where it's basically building a family tree based on how they're deciphering the DNA through an algorithm. So I, I'm guessing the algorithm looks at how you're sharing DNA with different people. And it kind of is doing basically what it's doing is it's doing a tree version form of clustering but it's trying to decipher you know which is paternal which is maternal and then even more not necessarily which is you know specifically your paternal paternal side or paternal maternal side but you know which is your paternal side and then how does it break down that way um but i found well that is useful and it is interesting it is clunky it's kind of hard to understand user friendliness on that is very low um and so yeah overall user friendliness i think for the website fairly low and then the last thing was kind of the quality of the website the quality of i, I guess how 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 useful is it for genealogy and as we just discussed the usefulness for genealogy is very low at this point. I mean, it is obviously very useful having a lot of DM matches and being a d big database, but then taking out a lot of their big tools. It's yeah. So for me, I'm going to put it B tier. So we've, we're off to a start. We finally have one down after how, how long have I, been? I've been streaming for 20 minutes. Uh, or, oh, I guess only 17, but still, all right, we'll try to speed this up a bit. Cause we have a lot to go through. So the next ancestry DNA. So in terms of how often do I use it every day? I, honestly, I'm on it, doing it multiple times a day. I run so many DNA kits through it. Um, user friendliness, I would say it's pretty high up there, especially just in how they try to make things understandable. And there's kind of, on Ancestry, there always seems to be some way to kind of click and see more information and learn more. And they kind of they give a bit more. Granted, it's very easy for people to misread things anyway. But especially with like the side view stuff and a lot of the newer tools that they've been rolling out um, for non-endogamous populations, I have found those have been absolutely amazing. Um, for endogamous populations, still a lot of very valuable tools. Through lines is quite a valuable tool. Um, I don't know if anyone is even doing, uh, 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 gosh, what were those kinds of trees called? Uh, the, if anyone remembers what these types of trees were called, there was a specific term for them. But basically it was a tree where if you thought of a specific connection, you would connect it into your tree that had the DNA connected to your profile. And then you kind of wait for, this was back with DNA circles, for things to update and to um, show, uh, you know, did it think that you were on, on to the right thing. If anyone remembers what that's called, I'm trying to remember. It's like, I want to say it's like twin trees or something like, I forgot. But I, there's a lot of different things that you can do with Ancestry DNA. So it's definitely going to be above B tier. So now it's, I think it's a question of A or S tier. And... The last thing to consider is quality of being able to do genealogy. And I'd say it's it's extremely high. I mean, honestly, it's one of those websites that really, if someone says they're doing DNA testing to solve a mystery in their family or expand their family tree, solve an adoptee or, uh, you know, other stuff, the, you know, Ancestry is the place that everyone I feel suggests to test, most especially because you can test through Ancestry and then upload to pretty much everyone except for 23andMe, which, you know, I, I think 23andMe is definitely going to be one of the lowest in terms of the DNA sites. I think all the DNA sites are going to be B and above. But Ancestry DNA, I think, is pretty solidly S tier. Um, you know, granted that chromosome browser, oof, that's the one thing that would make me kind of feel like, you know, hey, we need to put you in A tier. But honestly, while it does bring them down a bit, it doesn't bring them down enough. So they're definitely solidly A tier. 
Um, yeah, True Lines, one of one of, one of the best tools. Um, I kind of wish they still had DNA circles. It was basically through lines, but a little bit different. Um, you know, just it's just different ways to view the data can give you just you know make you think about it differently. And I think that's one of the beauties about all of these new tools and techniques coming out is, you know, there's new ways to visualize it or see it. And once you have a new way to do that, it makes it just it makes your brain just kind of synapse and connect in a different way. So yeah, the advanced comparison, they need that. They definitely need that. Um, 23andMe was one of the only ones to have it. Right now they don't. My Heritage DNA is the only, I think they have it back again. Cause I think they, they had paused a lot of stuff <laughs> for a while there. Um, so yeah. Uh, Let's go to the next. So continuing DNA. Ooh, you know what? I wonder if I should do DNA painter or wait for that because that's not a DNA testing company. That's just a DNA test. Not, or that, that's just a DNA or I, I guess it's better to say a genetic genealogy website. So we'll, we'll wait for that one. Although I'm pretty sure I know where that's going already. Um, all right. So family tree DNA. Family tree DNA, how often do I use it? Um, well, for one, when I was working investigative genetic genealogy, I was literally using it all day, every day. Um, I was actually, you know, I was constantly in contact with their lab, gene by gene. And, um, you know, they're, they're the first company that I ever tested with. So, you know, that's the first place that I tested. It's where I had my parents' first test. It's where I had my grandmother test. It's where I've had a large majority of my, you know, when I first had cousins test because I was there. Hey, test on family tree DNA. Um, on top of that, it's the only one with advanced Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA testing, uh, at least out of the general DNA testing websites. There are other sites that do that sort of stuff, you know, like YFL is a great example. And then, um, uh, oh gosh, what is that? The Mito Y, Mags Golden's uh, website, which is uh, a, a Jed match version of mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome DNA. But with family tree DNA, I am on it all the time. Now, in terms of user friendliness, I feel like they could definitely use a bit more of an update. They did an update sometime in the past few years. I don't remember exactly when it was. And it was an okay update for the visual stuff, but like, the way their family tree function works, the way the surnames and the the uh, uh, what they have is the earliest ancestor. So you can put your earliest known paternal ancestor and earliest known maternal ancestor, which is very obviously useful for Y DNA testing and mitochondrial DNA testing. But the way they have it on the site feels so clunky to me. It just feels very early 2000s website. Um, they do have some decent tools. They probably have one of the better chromosome browsers. Um, although I think I think my heritage is chromosome browser is probably the best. Um, and then you know the Y DNA, the the big Y. I mean, if you're going to be doing Y DNA testing or mitochondrial DNA testing, but if you're going to be doing Y DNA testing, doing the big Y through family tree DNA gives you so much. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it'd be nice to see other companies get into the Y DNA and, and mitochondrial DNA game of actual matching and not just, hey, here's a generalized haplogroup. Um, but Family Tree DNA, it's the place to go. But it's very hard to understand the results. But part of that is because they're not washing it down for the consumer. They're just kind of giving it straight up scientific style. Um, you know, so like the block tree is very nice, but in my own opinion, even as someone who understands it in the advanced way, I wish there was some more user ability with it. Like I know when I'm looking at the block tree and it's showing the different kind of generations on the side, I always kind of want to hover over the different branches and see well, when's the estimated most recent common ancestor or, and when is the estimated creation of the, uh, subgroup you know, the sub haplogroup. So there's a lot that's kind of, that, that they could improve on that end too. Um, but then in quality of the information, in terms of 
or you know ability to use for genealogy and genetic genealogy it's definitely high up there their autosomal their family finder stuff is not really anywhere near as good as ancestry dna or uh my heritage dna which my heritage dna i think just takes the cake with the dna tools which as many of you know because of my best dna test video that i did basically doing that and i think family history finders or not family history finders uh family history fanatics i think they voted i think you know andy lee had like a whole system of how he figured you know figured out which website was the best and my heritage ended up coming out on top a few times in a row um so with my with family tree dna with all that said i think it's going to fall into a tier so right now we're kind of getting rankings of the dna test which are pretty similar to what i had in my best dna test video although i don't remember exactly if 23andme was in front of family tree dna or not i know i rated living dna the lowest but they don't have living dna on here um and I'll talk about websites that aren't on here in a bit. I guess after each group, I'll go over the websites that aren't on here and where I'd put them. I don't know, let me let me check out some comments. Um, well, hello, welcome to the welcome to the stream. Uh, one of uh, one of the people that have been in the comment section many many times. Um, just reading through chat. Would you say Ancestry DNA is best for non-Europeans as well? I think it depends which non-Europeans that is. Um, I think for non-Europeans in terms of uh, American indigenous, it was probably a, a, a good way to go just because that's probably gonna be the most likely website that people will have tested who have a, a American Indian ancestry, American indigenous ancestry. Um, 23andMe would probably be the other one uh, for that, but yeah. And then in terms of, you know, if, if it's Asian ancestry, I'm not quite sure which one would necessarily be the best. Um, you know, I, WeGene and 23MaFong and all the other Asian DNA-based websites might be better. I just don't know if they have matching or if it's just an admixture health and traits sort of thing. Um, and then for African, I think there's a question of possibly living DNA being better, but just in terms of the admixture. But because the admixture for African is much more nuanced on living DNA, I would think that would be something that would lead more people with African ancestry to want to test there and thus make their data DNA database possibly more robust with an African ancestral testing group of people. Um, and then in terms of South American or I guess, you know, Latino uh, or Latin American ancestry and Caribbean ancestry, I would probably think those would be more my heritage just because my heritage has been very active throughout South America, especially and so like if you're if you have brazilian ancestry or argentinian ancestry or um you know those are the big ones and i think venezuelan as well but then also you know just anything south american and even central american and a lot of caribbean my heritage has some of the biggest databases of people who've tested from those areas um so it, it really depends on which non-europeans that is uh yeah, there is, there is a button to add other images for other websites, and I thought about doing it, but then I just didn't really want to take the time, and I figured I'll just, you know, I'll just kind of go mention stuff as, as, as we go along. Um, West and Central Asians, that one would probably be my heritage. That's, actually, that's, a, that's a very good point, because East Asians, that's going to be more of the 23 Ma Fong and Wee Gene, but then your West and Central Asians, you know, that's, you know, your Turkey, your, your uh, uh, Georgia, uh, I, I, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Turkmenistan. I'm trying to think of all the different countries there. Um, and just, you know, a lot of that area, old Ottoman Empire area, basically, and then the Middle East and all that. Uh, but I, I'd probably say my heritage is the best for testing there. Um, 
just because my heritage just seems to have so many people from those areas. All right, so uh, just a quick you know, Have you added WikiTree yet? They have WikiTree on there uh, right here. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Have, John, if you're asking if I've uh, put it up yet, I've only gotten to these three so far. So I, I don't know how long this stream's going to be, but I get a feeling it might be a while. So, um, oh, looking at the numbers. All right, we've got 87 people right now. Two on Twitch. I've got two on Twitch, five on Facebook, 80 on uh, YouTube. If anybody is on Twitch, I'm really trying to build up the Twitch stuff. And also, if you're on Facebook, I'm trying to build those up so that, you know, just kind of have something beyond just youtube but if you're on there go follow me and you know, that'll help me out but i'm not telling you to leave you <laughs> leave the stream all right back to um uh, this so now we're gonna do i'm gonna skip jed match for right now and jump to my heritage dna and with my heritage dna i honestly think that it's going to fall into s tier um, first, how much do I use it? Now, I actually only use it maybe once a week, so I use it much more in line with kind of how I use like Family Tree DNA and 23andMe. I'm not on it every day like I am with Ancestry DNA, but it's one of those sites that kind of every week, like, oh, let me go check. Uh, plus, I also, you know, I always check the emails I get from them, but obviously, for anyone who saw the tools I'd like to see in DNA testing, I wish they had better notification options for what we get. Um, so with my heritage dna even though i don't necessarily use a lot i think the quality of it and the user friendliness of it is way beyond a lot of the other all the other websites um i think if in my feeling it seems to be the website that you can hop into easiest and just kind of understand um you know they kind of try to simplify some complex things into much much easier to read uh charts and stuff um but most especially the tools that they actually do have for genetic genealogy so i think the big thing being and this kind of goes in the last part of it too is the quality of being able to do gen genetic genealogy through the website um you know their chromosome browser hands down best chromosome browser that's out there the um the shared matches feature being able to look at your shared matches and the in-depth information of how much do you match your shared matches, how much does your match share with your shared matches. And then they do have some pretty good filtering options, a little bit more advanced than some of the other websites when you're looking at your actual match list. Um, but there are, there are also some places that are lacking. I think one of the things that they're lacking with, and I haven't mentioned this with any of the websites yet, and I'll talk about this, um, is that they have a really bad um gosh how do i put this uh they have i don't know <laughs> all right well one thing i'm, I'm gonna actually i know it's gonna go s tier so i'm gonna go ahead and drop it so i'm not uh shaking it around um but oh okay it they have the they, they don't have a good way of managing a bunch of dna kits um, so with 23andMe and Family Tree DNA, they don't have any option of managing DNA kits. Basically, every DNA kit has a different login. But then for my heritage, they do have kind of a middle of the road way of doing it, where you can have multiple people test and then just link it through your account uh, or upload multiple different DNA tests through your account so you can go and look through stuff. But it's very clunky and that's actually not as easy to use but then with ancestry that one's the one that has the best uh collaborative tool i guess might be the best way to say it where you can invite people to actually you know look at your matches or you can help have them get editing access for stuff and it makes it so that it's the easiest to you know if you want to have another genetic genealogist look into a tree or look into some DNA matches for somebody, it's easy to just share as a collaboration and you can you know, have options on how accessible are they to editing or doing whatever. So it would be really, you know, it'd be really awesome if other websites did that. 
Um, but that's one of the downsides with my heritage. But beyond that, I think it definitely falls in S tier most, especially just because it's one of the best in terms of the tools. The other tools stuff that they have, they also have in uh, the um, uh, auto. <laughs> Why can't I can't think of anything auto clusters? I wanted to call it an auto segment, which technically it has that with it, but they have the auto cluster tool as part of my heritage. Um, just just one of the best in terms of the tools. So, yeah, I wish they allowed filtering matches by ethnicity. I completely agree. And that was one of the tools I suggested in my video uh, about DNA tools I'd like to see is not only being able to filter by ethnicity but then also filtering it by percentage of ethnicity you know so like if if i work with someone and they don't know about any jewish ancestry but then they take a dna test and then they get eight percent jewish ancestry well they're going to want to find their relatives that are almost 100 percent jewish and so if you filter by ethnicity not just you know okay jewish dna but then also you know people that are maybe say 75 percent or more jewish meaning that at least three of their four grandparents are jewish so they probably likely grew up jewish and knew about it um then find looking at those matches specifically and by doing that then you can better figure out how you're possibly where you're getting this jewish from and how you possibly relate to them because if you can find a bunch of matches we're all 100 jewish then possibly find out how some of them are related then you can do basically this is genetic genealogy so i'm not, I'm not going to give the whole process i think a lot of you uh deal with this all the time um okay so we went through those four they do not have living dna in here um, so I'm just going to mention it real quick. If it were in here, I think it would be the, it, it, it'd be in B tier, maybe C tier. Um, the reason why, yeah, actually, geez, I kind of do wish I had uploaded the, <laughs> the images. I'm not going to deal with it now. So we'll just talk about it. So at least it'll be discussed. Uh, but it probably fall B tier, um, possibly C tier and the big thing being their their matching database is really small not that great um I personally barely ever use it that's kind of a big thing you know I I use it geez honestly I use it maybe once or twice a year most of the time when I'm I'm looking in a living DNA it's because I'm looking into it because I'm doing some sort of video about it or you know something like that uh, so it's really not one that I use much, which honestly probably will that that'd probably be the thing that pushed it into C tier. It's just the fact I, I barely ever use it. Um, the the main thing that really makes Living DNA stand out is just that they have such nuanced results for Northwestern European, most specifically British Isles, and then also more nuanced for, uh, admixture results for African ancestry. I think. I can't remember if they were, had mentioned more nuanced res results for another population group or geographical area, but they might have. But there is a question of how reliable those are. I don't know if Living DNA puts out a white paper. I feel like I've looked for that in the past. And I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I would have remembered if I had found one. And that's kind of just a big disappointing thing with any of these websites that really claim to be, you know, the ones to have the most nuanced admixture results for this or that. And then they don't say, you know, what the precision and recall and the actual science behind everything is. Um, and I think that's one of the big downsides with my heritage DNA, unfortunately, is their admixture is one of the number one that I hear people complaining about, most especially people that aren't really genealogists people that just kind of have a general idea of their family history and then they get my heritage and it's like way off from anything that they knew um, so yeah so living dna would fall into c tier but now getting into dna related websites um or at least the ones that i know because some i might not know but dna painter this one i'm just gonna go ahead and draw honestly you know i'm gonna put it I don't, yeah, I'll put it number one. DNA Painter, I am on every day, multiple times a day. Um, you know, for one, the Shared Centimorgan Project. 
I mean, it's, I don't remember the numbers. I am doing this all the time. It is so hard to remember all the numbers. Don't try to force yourself to do that. It's just not worth it. The tool's there for a reason, and I use it every day. It's so helpful. On top of that, so many different things they're constantly rolling out. Um, for one, the main point of the website, DNA painting, chromosome painting. That is That has been one of the things that has taken my genetic genealogy way above what I ever thought I could do. Um, you know, that was really the, the website that I, once I started really diving into that one, I'm trying to remember when I first got into DNA painter, I feel like it's been a long time, but I mean that, that website, you know, it just, once you start learning about more segments and, you know, being able to correlate and then understanding confidence of segments. So, you know, like you, you might have a match that, you know, that they are a match to you. But then you can look at your segments that you're sharing with them and maybe not all of the segments are true segments you can have true matches that have false segments most especially for people with endogamous ancestry and so like one of the beautiful things with dna painters not only can you paint the dna but then you can set confidence levels for the different segments so if you end up matching on a certain segment with a, a, a new match and you go to see you know okay well where is that segment falling in my ancestry and then you find it in your dna painter well if it's got a high confidence on the segment you're like okay that maybe I'm much more confident on it versus you see a segment that you labeled low confidence. You're like, okay, well, maybe it's not exactly through that same family line, even though that's where it's matching through because I have low confidence in that segment that it could be through that line. So there's a possibility maybe it is through that line or maybe it's through a different line. So, you know, that's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys are getting, uh, you guys are getting a little, <laughs> little bit of, uh, a little bit of talk from the dogs <laughs> put some dog emojis in the chat if you heard the woofs in the background <laughs> um but anyway so with dna painter it's just you know you can do so much with it and really just it's just such a great website um i'm not going to go into every single thing about it it's an obvious s tier johnny pearl great work amazing amazing keep it up and I, you know i've i've known johnny over the years i first met him at roots tech in 2019 2018 i can't remember which one but i met him at roots tech and you know he, he's just such a nice guy he did a couple of interviews for me on the channel which if no one's ever seen those a lot of my roots tech interviews never got uh views like they like got a couple hundred views and that was absolutely it um so you know go watch those because it's kind of cool because it's like he's talking about a lot of stuff that he has since like he rolled out years back you know so it, it's it yeah go check that out but dna painter is amazing uh so let's jump to the next so going along dna wise okay so jed match jed match is another one that i think is going to be an s tier and I think I'm going to put it right behind DNA Painter and in front of Ancestry and my Heritage DNA. GEDmatch is a site I am on every day, um, especially during my investigative genetic genealogy work. I mean, that was like the site we used. So technically I wasn't on GEDmatch though for that. Uh, for investigative genetic genealogy, we use a separate website called GEDmatch Pro. And that site is, it's not one you want to use as a genetic genealogist. It's basically, the best way to think of it is Jed Match Light with a paywall. So, you know, there's, you know, basically it's, uh, you know, it's, if there's an investigative case, a Doe, uh, a Jane Doe or a John Doe case, or they're trying to identify a uh, perpetrator of a violent crime, or they are uploading a target test for a DNA case, so a target test being, you know, we researched a family tree and while we weren't able to solve it, we were able to kind of get a better idea of maybe it's over here. So we suggest you go and target test these family members and those tests will then tell us more. And so if people are putting target tests uh, for a case, that also goes through GEDmatch Pro. Um, if the 
agency is uploading it or we were uploading it. Um, but uploading it to GenMatch Pro costs money. And uh, GenMatch Pro also has very limited resources compared to GenMatch. So like there is an admixture on GenMatch Pro. Uh, now granted, I've been, out of, uh, I've been out of work for a couple of weeks for investigative genetic genealogy. So I haven't been on GenMatch Pro in weeks. So things might've changed there. Uh, but on GenMatch Pro, when I was last using it, they only had K13 as the admixture, no other admixture options on there. Um, they also had uh, just a few of the tools, not many available. And um, you were just, it, it was just much more limited. But I think the main thing we really want to talk about is GEDmatch. And they are one of the websites that have, for one, they give you the best manipulation options, I guess you could say, or sorting filtering options when looking at your match list. So they don't call it a match list necessarily. They call it your one to many list. So you're comparing one DNA kit to many, as opposed to their one to one uh, match tool, which is a comparison of one DNA kit to one DNA kit. So that just in itself where you can manipulate, you know, how many centimorgans do I want the minimum segments to be? So typical websites, the minimum segments are six or seven centimorgans, like 23 me, family tree DNA, ancestry, my heritage. That's kind of the base they all use is about six, seven centimorgans. They all have different things going on with how they do that. Ancestry has the timber algorithm. Others have different ways that they kind of cut things out or um, trying to think of the exact terminology, which is what they use for timber, but it's kind of not cutting things out, but almost like reducing it in a sense. Um, but with GEDmatch, you can go and you can do, you know, all of this different manipulation with the centimorgans and SNP overlaps, which, you know, SNP overlap is not something I feel that is used much in regular genetic genealogy, but it was something that in investigative genetic genealogy, we would look at, um, most, especially for intelligence kits which was a new type of dna testing um but then also snip overlaps for degraded dna and things like that so like with investigative genetic genealogy you're dealing with cases where your dna is your dna profile is not a 99 percent read dna kit like you get from direct to consumer like you know 23andme family tree my heritage all of those instead you're getting you know 86 percent uh, call calls or, you know, 92%, if it's, you know, sometimes you'd get maybe above 95%. So you're dealing with profiles that have a lot of issues and there's also degradation. So there's a higher chance that some of these reads you're getting are actually misreads. So the actual SNPs are possibly, you know, so there's a lot more complication to that. And so when you're looking at matches for investigative genetic genealogy, SNP overlap is something that can sometimes be used. And that was something that GEDmatch allowed to manipulate. But even beyond that, the tier one tools that they have, so many tier one tools, highly, highly, highly recommend getting tier one membership, very worthwhile. Um, and then they just they just have a lot of just cool and fun tools in different ways too, um, just you know different stuff. So, yeah, dog. <laughs> boys, what are you doing? My my roommate's coming back, and the dogs are like not having it that he's wearing a hoodie. <laughs> I see I see all the I see all the dog emojis from before in the chat. Everyone be sure to put more dog emojis. Lots and lots of dog emojis. Right? Do you agree, Jack? Dog emojis for you? What about you, Pete? He said yes. Okay. All right. So, Jedmatch S tier. Um, now, is there any other DNA stuff in here? Not really. So, um... There, there were a couple of different DNA websites that they obviously don't have here. Uh, some that are very, you know, used a lot. Some that aren't so much. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, one of the websites is, uh, I'm trying to remember his last name, but Larry from, uh, I can't even remember his name, uh, or his, his channel name, but he has a website that uses what's known as the ball and chain method method 
uh, I think that's CM Solves. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, uh, put it in the chat and I'll put you up on screen. Uh, but I believe it's CM Solves and it uses the ball and chain method. That's a website that'd probably be kind of like D or F tier. It's kind of useful, but it's very, you know, very, very limited, not much to it. Um, there's also, there's the Mito Y uh, website I mentioned before. Yeah, Larry Jones. Thank you. Thank you, John. If you, uh, if you know his channel name too, I want to give his channel name a shout out. Um, so, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Mito Y website, I've used a, a, a little bit here and there. You know, it does mitochondrial DNA matching, Y chromosome matching, but the user friendliness is very low. You've got to really know kind of DNA stuff to be able to enter in your um, profiles. And even then, like I, I had some trouble with it, but I know Mags uh, has said that, you know, she's working on the website and developing it. And, you know, she's been, I mean, it's been growing a lot over the past year or so so that one probably fall same kind of dear f tier just partially because i use it so little but also just because the match list is growing and that's that's where the main thing needs to needs to be uh for something like that uh, just reading through chat real quick um hold on I'm a, i need to blow my nose i'm gonna mute you guys all for a Um, by the way, I do see a lot of people asking questions, which I know I'm not getting to all the questions. I'm trying to, you know, we have a lot of stuff to go through and I'm almost in an hour here, but, um, you know, so if I'm not getting your questions, I do apologize. But for anyone that's on YouTube, there is the super chat or super sticker. I forgot exactly what it's called. So, you know, if you do that, I will make sure to answer any of those questions. Um, but otherwise, you know, I can't guarantee it. So I do apologize, but I'll try to, you know, I'll try to answer some questions as, as we go along. Um, so, all right. So now that we've, uh, now that we've kind of talked about um, the DNA websites, now let's get into all of the other stuff. And I guess I, I might as well just kind of go from, I'll just go left to right. I don't really have any other reasoning to, to go by. Um, that'd be good. So we'll start with American Ancestors by the New England Historic Genealogical Society, uh, NEHGS. Um, this is the oldest genealogical society in the United States, founded in Boston in the, I want to say 1850s, but maybe it was 1860s or 70s. It was definitely in the 1800s. And um, a lot of amazing people that work there. And they have, basically, they have kind of a... Uh, uh, a records database um, online of a lot of different stuff, mostly dealing with New England, but a lot elsewhere as well. Um, they have a lot of stuff that you won't necessarily find on Ancestry or Family Search or My Heritage, which are kind of the, I think the three big ones when it comes to record websites or at least general record web. Blah, 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 blah. general record websites in terms of english speaking countries so I, I i know i said this already but i say i'll say it again you know the english speaking countries thing i think is kind of important with looking at the websites because for a lot of websites you know for people in america canada uh the uk ireland scotland and australia new zealand and you probably even throw south africa in there too they're using a lot of the same websites like, you know, Ancestry has a division for pretty much every single one of those countries that I mentioned, um, or at least they have that as part of one of their divisions. And then, um, you know, for a lot of these other websites, that's kind of what those, everyone's kind of using the same general stuff, but a lot of it is because we, everyone in those areas are also coming from somewhat similar backgrounds, not all completely, but, you know, a large majority. But with American Ancestors, they're getting kind of some more specific North England, or not North England, New England sort of stuff. Now, how often do I use it? I would probably say I maybe use their database once or twice a month. Not a lot. Um, while they do have unique stuff on there, I do often find when I kind of search it, it just kind of seems like I'm just, I'm seeing stuff that I found on other databases as well. 
Um, so, you know, it is kind of a great one stop shop because it will seem like I find stuff that like, oh, well, I found this thing on Ancestry and I found this thing on Find My Past and I found this thing on My Heritage and I found this on Family Search, but then I found all of them on American Ancestors. Um, so, you know, in terms of how often I use it, definitely low, but it's, it's, it's not going to be DRF tier. Um, in terms of the usability of their site, I've never had an issue with it. I feel like it's, it's pretty nice. Um, I also have used it so little that I really don't have an advanced knowledge of like, you know, suggesting, oh, well, when you do the search function, do this and this will help you in whatever way. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really have the clearest of views on usability with it. Um, but in terms of genealogically useful, I feel like it is decently genealogically useful. I know that they have a lot more on their database necessarily than the, the records. Like I think they have a lot of like historical society books and I think they have a lot of like publications and things uh, from, you know, for hundreds of years. So it's like they, they do have a lot of really unique stuff that is just, you know, for certain people, you're going to be going on American Ancestors and that's going to be the place to find the document that breaks open a brick wall. So I feel like because of that, it's like, gosh, I'm like fighting whether it's C or B tier. Like, I feel like they truly honestly fall in C tier, but maybe I just like uh, Dave, Dave Allen Lambert and Britton Simons too much. I kind of wanted to fall into B tier, but it truly, I think it's, it's more of a C tier mostly just because of how how little i use it um so let me, let me see how how's chat doing y'all doing good oh okay thank you john john tyner dna family trees ball and pattern method yeah is it ball and pattern or is it the uh ball and chain method or maybe it's maybe it's known by both so you know it's actually an interesting website i'm gonna let me see if i can um Share it. Blah, 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 blah. So, okay. Let me share it. Where is it? Here we go. So this is this is that website uh, by Larry Jones from D uh, DNA Family Trees. So it's known as the Ball and Pattern Method. And basically it's a different way to just kind of do relationship prediction. Um, he did a, uh, he did a, um, a tutorial video about it, which if you want to learn about it, I suggest looking at, cause I'm not going to be able to explain it right now. Um, but just, you know, just something interesting to put up on here and like, just kind of show what it looks like, you know, let's say, let's say it's, uh, something common that i get with uh my matches or not not super common but you know not uncommon to get a lot of matches around this amount for jewish dna and so you can see you know it gives you different options so i forgot exactly how you're supposed to read i think it's basically you go up to the highest percentage here and then you look down here and then it kind of gives you this probability map of you know what are the most likely generations what's possible based on your age. And so I think it can change because you change to 80 versus if they're 10, you know, so just uh, just an inter interesting website to learn about for, um, for anyone who's not familiar with it. So, but let's get back to the rankings. All right, so let's check uh, chat real quick. Ah, Charlie's joining us. Evening, Charlie. Uh, David's asking, why did my heritage in 23andMe delete certain things they had for genetic genealogy? 99% um, sure that it all had to do with the 23andMe data leak that happened in the past month or two. Um, I, I mentioned this kind of towards the beginning of the stream, so anyone kind of joining recently might not have heard me mention this. Uh, but for anyone that kind of wants to learn a bit more about it, I suggest looking up um, uh, some ordinary gamers, Mudahar, uh, who has a video about the breach, and you know he leans he leans more towards you know not DNA testing. So 
he does kind of have that bent in what he says but he is very very even keeled and you know going through the information and showing you know what what was supposedly actually taken how did it happen um you know in terms of you know what happened with 23 me and uh or you know like like how how did they technically hack their website which technically it wasn't a hack but you know go watch his video to learn more about that so very interesting stuff so um i think my heritage has their tools back or at least a large majority of the stuff back 23 me still kind of blocking stuff last i last i heard if anyone knows different definitely definitely post so um all right so um talked about american ancestors ancestry ancestry i am on every day i mean kind of same thing as ancestry dna i think it's gonna it's gonna go up there the way that i do my workflow and this actually might be something i end up doing a video on i actually do a workflow going through kind of multiple websites but ancestry is like my main base for building and researching trees so the main workflow that i do is i usually start and build most of my trees through ancestry part of it being because they have the most robust database um for private trees so family search has a very robust database but they're a collaborative tree so it's not quite as good of a thing to do research on especially research you want to kind of keep private um i think family search might have an option now for some sort of private tree thing but i don't know exactly um but on ancestry you know it's just the easiest way and there's kind of you know there's steps to it and i think i discussed this in one of my youtuber family tree series of you know, when you're doing research, especially on Ancestry, you know, you build the tree out, you get what you know, you kind of do some searching for documents if you need to, but once the hints start popping up, then that's kind of the easiest way to go about things is go through the hints. And I'm not saying go through and just add the hints, go through the hints and analyze the hints is the better way to say it. But because the way that their system works is so, it's really good that it, you usually get quite quality hints and as long as you can learn to kind of sift through the incorrect information, because if someone builds a tree with the people you're researching and they connect wrong information, Ancestry will suggest that to you, not only in the, you know, hey, look at this Ancestry members tree, but it will also put in your hints records that that person connected to that, you know, the incorrect records that the other user Put into their ancestry tree so you have to make sure oh well it's the same name but make sure that it's not you know different people just with the same name which is i think that's one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have when going through different trees is you know you find all this incorrect information and at the same time it's one of the reasons why collaborative trees are so great is just because if there isn't incorrect information you can correct it on a collaborative tree Whereas if you go on Ancestry and you see someone's trees has really bad incorrect information and it's completely screwing up Ancestry's suggestion system, your only course of action is to message. Well, there's a few courses of action, I guess, but you can message that user and say, hey, what you have is wrong. And or you can go in, I think certain things you can comment, like you can go and comment on profiles people have built and stuff. So I think now you can at least go into Ancestry and kind of say like, hey, the stuff that this person added is incorrect and here's the correct information. Um, I've never done that, so I'm not 100% sure that that's exactly how you can do it. But I have, I have commented on photos and things people have uploaded, so I know you can comment on it. Um, Let's see. Oh, thank you very much, Highlander, for becoming a YouTube member. If anyone wants to uh, help support the channel and become a YouTube member, I appreciate it. And you'll get a quick shout out like Highlander did. Um, yeah, I get a lot done on Ancestry. I have a tree of 30K people and I haven't paid for a subscription once. Um, yeah, I mean, with Ancestry, there's a lot of ways to get around the subscription stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't necessarily want to pay the high prices ancestry charges in most library systems you can get it for free if you have a family search or a family history library near you uh you can go there and you can access ancestry free granted there it, it's it, it 
you have to log in through their user profiles, I think, or I, I don't know. At least when I've done it, it was clunky. Um, but I think one of the big things with Ancestry is the way that their trees are done or their tree software is like, I, I certainly think it could be improved because I'm a big genie fanboy, And part of it is because of the manipulation uh, ability of the tree. But Ancestry is pretty decent in of itself, um, especially with their ability to kind of choose certain branches to open up or, you know, show siblings, hide siblings, things like that. But also with Ancestry, you can use what's known as the floating tree method. So if you're, you know, let's say you're doing a research project that involves multiple families and you want them under just one ancestry tree, but you don't want them connected, you can use floating trees. So you'll have multiple families where their trees aren't connected, but they're still under that one tree sort of thing. Um, the other thing is that uh, they have a very advanced tagging and custom tags and comments and notes options and so you know if you do kind of want to have a tree that's public but being researched on you can tag stuff so that you know unverified or still researching or you know a lot of other stuff or like when i was working in investigative genetic genealogy we would do you know we would we would basically kind of use ancestry as a hub of um you know where we did all our collaboration and, you know, because it's a team of genealogists, it wasn't just one genealogist. And so floating trees allowed us to be building, you know, trees for singular cases, but having a bunch of trees. And then there was even a method of collaboration that I had actually learned from a genealogist or uh, two genealogists I learned this from uh, was Dana Leeds and Wendy McLean, uh, two really great genetic genealogists. I'm sure everyone's heard of Dana Leeds because she's the one who did the Leeds method. Uh, but they had told me about what's known as the tether tree method, which is kind of like an advanced version of floating trees designed specifically for when you're collaborating with multiple genealogists. So I think I've said more than enough about ancestry. So let's get into the next ones. Uh, this first one, I can easily say, what even is this? <laughs> I'm not sure what type of what. Let me see. Antonani um so let's see antonati oh so it's an italian website okay interesting which you know i have researched i have i have researched in italian genealogy before specifically livorno um but i was also researching 18th century records for my nunes vaz family and yeah, but I definitely will need to check this one out. Um, let's see. Actually, hold on. Let's. Uh, I'm actually. I need to do it just like this. All right. Will that work? Uh, I don't like it looking like that, but whatever. We're gonna. We're gonna edit and make this look just a little bit nicer. So everyone can see. <laughs> see. Okay. That looks good. And we don't need to see the URL bar. All right. So, yeah. So, if anyone uses this website, uh, comment and chat. Obviously, I think uh, Carol does, <laughs> unless she's commenting about something else. <laughs> but I think she was saying that to me, not using it. Um, Chris uses Antonati a lot. Yeah, Ferrero. I, th I think I'm saying his last name right. He's actually, he's one of my, my mods in my um, Discord, which by the way, if anyone's not in my Discord, go to Discord. And speaking of Discords, actually, I should give a shout out for this, uh, the, the charts um, to the Genealogy Discord. Um, I think it's just called the Genealogy Discord because they had an anniversary recently. And I don't know if someone from there made it but they're the ones who were posting about it, and that's how I learned about it. So, um, yeah. Oh, oh. Charlie, what's the map behind you today? Can anybody guess? So I, it's something I'm going to be doing, and I, all the people that have watched my multiple streams so far may have noticed, is that uh, 
I um, have a different map every single time. So <laughs> that's going to be one of the things. So you guess I'm not seeing any coming through yet. So I just noticed something with my stream. Hopefully it didn't mess anything up. Oh, that's why. Okay. That was weird. Whoops. For a second there, all the, like, <laughs> there's all this stuff on the stream that usually shows, and it wasn't there. And I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? And it's just, I was in the edit screen. Um, all right. Just reading through some of these. Uh, Rob says Ancestry is mostly feeding me my own research I have elsewhere. I don't use Ancestry for my hair or my heritage for research. Mostly Dutch archives or German through Archeon or the free archives that they have. Yeah, honestly, for anyone who has Dutch Ancestry, uh, you know, me having Dutch Ancestry personally and experienced it in this as well, like 99% of what you're finding on Ancestry or my heritage or family search is stuff that has been up online on all of these different websites for a long time. And some of, a lot of them I'm planning to talk about today. And I even know one of the Dutch websites is in this list that we have, but I've experienced this as well. And I think anyone that's been doing genealogy since at least the early 2010s, I was first on Ancestry in 2008, Genie in 2009. And then I don't remember the others, but you know, anyone that's been researching since then, especially if you uploaded photos or anything, it's just this constant barrage of being suggested hints of stuff that you were the one to upload or stuff that you were the one to discover. So completely feel you. Completely feel you on that. Um, oh, yeah. Here's a question. Have you seen A and D Tro today? And Tro, if, you, if so, what do you think of it? I think it's mainly health. So it's A N D Tro, A N D being like the Spanish version of DNA. I don't know what it stands for exactly. If anyone knows what A N D stands for, uh, let me know. Um, but my, I, I have just a little bit of experience with it. One, the the first experience I have with it is their marketing team has been in contact with me for months, trying to sponsor me uh, for a video. And um, I basically sent them back saying, look, I'm not willing to do a sponsorship, but what I am willing to do is a review video as long as you allow me to, you know, critique it, say what I don't like about it and, you know, say the truth. Um, otherwise I have no interest in it. Um, and so I'm waiting to hear back from them. Last I heard from their agent was that they were gonna talk to them and see what they thought. Uh, but then the only other experience I have with it is with the reaction, which will be coming out on Monday, which will be to NFKRZ taking that, that test. So I did see his results. Um, it is from what I saw, it's mainly health. And I think that there was one part that he even read from the site that said something about how, you know, they don't do family history stuff because they don't want people's privacy to be, you know, uh, 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 whatever, you know, uh, uh, infringed upon is the word I'm looking for. Uh, so, you know, they do, ha they did have an ad mixture for him. Granted, the ad mixture was interesting to say the least. And I'd be, I, I, I didn't find a white paper from them. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll find out, see how that, see how that goes. Uh, all right, continue back to the list. So now we have Archeon, and this is one I feel like I have heard, but I have never used it. Let's 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 take a look here. Okay, so it's a German. Okay, German church records. Yeah, like <laughs> an Ashkenazi Sephardi mixed Jew researching German church records. 
not gonna be very common i oh i guess you know i guess it depends it depends that's that's not completely true oh wow i guess it doesn't help if you can't see it let me make sure you all can see it too so yeah if any is anyone familiar with this website i'm not familiar with it oh gina gina told us what adn stands for acido deso wait desohiri banu pleco i i probably butchered that terribly <laughs> so all right so church books online with archeon i have never used this i i feel like i have heard this before which maybe if they do have church records that relate to jews in germany or even maybe like the german empire or something um let's see what do they have recently added so yeah just a lot of a lot of german stuff yeah so interesting so yeah anyone anyone who's uh, done german research and has used that website let, let me know comment uh well so back to the tier so well <laughs> that's quick um all right archive digital this is a uh, not, so part of it you know it's funny a lot of these ones sound familiar and archive digital is one of those so oh whoops i didn't even realize i clicked on uh that my heritage doesn't get enough credit for their dna tools and photo tools most keep going on about the ethnicity estimates why is that so important dna tools are king my heritage has helped my me loads agree in a recent stream i did this uh comparison and i thought it was a great comparison a lot of people that do the whole you know well this site's better because the ethnicity admixture than that site it's kind of like comparing cars by saying that one's radio is better than the other yes it kind of matters in the sense that when you're driving the car you're going to want to have a nice radio and be able to listen to what you want to listen to but in the overall scheme of things it really isn't that big of a deal when the car has so much more to offer like driving and getting you around aka the dna tools which allow you to drive and get around your family tree and break through those brick walls so completely agree um so let's see maybe no site costs nearly as much as archeon you have to pay per page you look at interesting um i wonder do they have do they do a lot of the digitization uh because i wonder if that's the case that might be why you know just they're just trying to fuel how much they have to pay themselves for things but that's that yeah there there were other other sites that i think have seen do that um which actually there was one that i used for uh, jewish genealogy and i even did a video about it at one point but i took the video down because the people that run the website unfortunately have done a lot of shady shady things um but it was a ukrainian jewish website um i'm not gonna mention the name though uh just browse through all right let's okay let's see archive digital is swedish and costs money but reeks archive has the sources and is free all right interesting i wonder if that's why i've heard of archive digital because i have been recently researching in um denmark and sweden for one of the youtuber family trees so actually i think actually there there was uh for the recent max miller video we did swedish research granted i didn't do the research for that part that was michael was um but that might have been i wonder if he used archive digital so speaking of which shout out to my buddy michael was from uh was, uh, hollander was heritage services great genealogist uh, who's been helping me out a lot on the max miller stuff um, so yeah, Archive uh, Digital, I, I'm going to say never used because I'm pretty sure I had heard of it. All right. The British Newspaper Archive. Now, this is one of those sites that has been on my list of I need to go there and use it. Um, but part of it is is because I, I feel like I research so little in, in the UK in general and you know most of the research i do will be on my own family which is a very short time period uh i mean it's like 50 years span in in london so i really don't do a whole lot of stuff outside of that i'm guessing that there's a lot of people in the chat who have used the website so definitely let me know in the chat um 
what you think of it, but I have never used a website, but it's been on my list. And the biggest thing for the biggest reason I've been trying to, or the biggest thing I've been looking at researching further was my second great grandfather, Abraham Nunes Vaz, uh, was a vaudeville actor on the stage in London. And I believe he traveled around um, the UK, at least Southern England. Uh, but I do know that he did travel around in the US too. Actually, he was a manager for his niece, who was also a dancer. Um, but he was an actor on the stage in London and I believe around elsewhere. And I've wanted to find lots of playbills and things of his. And if you go on Wikitree, Wikitree actually, when they did the challenge for me, somebody set up a page for him of his William H. McNay vaudeville actor. And they they had found a couple of different mentions of him that I hadn't had yet. Um, so, okay. Uh, so next one, Chronicling America, Historic American Newspapers. This is a website I have not used. Um, I feel like I've heard about it. I feel like there's so many newspaper websites. Um, I honestly, for my newspaper stuff, most of the time I'm using newspapers.com. Some of the time I'm using genealogybank.com. And some of the time I'm using Fulton History. And then beyond that, I don't really necessarily do a lot with it. I do also actually, the, the Library of Congress has a lot of, uh, a lot of good newspaper stuff too. Um, granted, it's a little bit harder to find stuff there at least in terms of doing a search by dates. So like, you know, one of my techniques, if I'm trying to find something going on uh, with a family and, you know, I want to specifically search a certain year or something, or even like, you know, maybe a certain couple of days, because, you know, you know, this happened on this day, so it should be reported in so many. Yeah. So, all right. Chronicling America. That's going to go and never use because I've never used it. So, um, but yeah, if you used it, if for any of these websites, if I have not used it, I definitely, you know, definitely tell me about, you know, anyone who has used it. Um, oh, Charlie, I don't know if you can uh, help Highlander out. She tried joining uh, the Discord. Uh, link was invalid. Is there a different link to use? So, actually, I guess I I shouldn't assume it's a she. Is it she? Or I should not assume that they are she. <laughs> um all right let's go on cindy's list cindy's list is one of those old school genealogy websites that like i used to use a good amount in the past but don't use so much anymore i mean it's probably been a few years since the last time i've used cindy's list um the last time i did use it i can say in terms of user experience super clunky it, it feels very like late 90s <laughs> internet um unless they really updated things um but the you know it, it was a great place to kind of find where to find stuff um but i think now too you know with how advanced google and just general searching stuff is it's just it's not quite as useful as it used to be and you know it is very clunky and just you know I don't know, you know, it's just the, 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 it's, it's, it's a helpful hub, but especially in terms of its usefulness for genetic or genealogy, just in general, I just don't feel like it's really that up there. And, you know, personally, I don't, I hope I don't anger too many people with this, but I kind of, I feel like it's D tier. Um, so let me know what you think of that. So, all right, moving on. Daughters of the American Revolution. Now, I've definitely used this website because I've chronicled using this website and how to use this website in uh, the YouTuber Family Tree series going through Mr. Beat's family. And not only did I do that, but then I also talked to David Allen Lambert, uh, who's not part of DAR. He's, he's part of SAR, Sons of the American Revolution, which uh, I don't think they No, They're not on here. So I guess maybe I should talk about them because they also have a website. Um, granted, I feel like DIRs is a little bit better than SARs, but they're both kind of difficult to use. So DIR in terms of how much do I use it? Rarely. I mean, it's one, it's a very niche website. You're literally looking at people who fought in the American revolution and, you know, I, I don't know the numbers of how many fought, but there's only so many people. 
and you know it's not going to be something like you know with ancestry where you're you know records of all types so you know it, it is isn't very just really what we put on Whoa. it's what we put out into the world and until on? everyone sees beauty for all that it is and all that it can be we won't stop moving beauty forward i have no idea what's going on oh. these are beautiful Ugh, a stupid ass. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else was like, who is talking right now? What is going on? Uh, <laughs> so, all right. All right, let's uh, move to like, yeah, it's fine. All right. Um, so, all right, I completely got lost. Okay, DAR. That's not exactly where I want it. I don't know if that's where I want it, but DR very, very niche. Um, for user friendliness i feel like it's okay it's somewhat clunky to use i certainly found that you know the it's you know there's there are some issues with it and yeah i, I not not the easiest to use in terms of genealogy usefulness it it varies um obviously you know it's only going to be limited to revolutionary families, you know, families in, in, in the colonies. Um, it's, you know, it, it does have some genealogy usefulness to it because you can look at old applications, see if, you know, maybe there's people that are submitting for a line that, you know, I don't have that in my family tree and you want to add it. But overall, I don't think, you know, just being super niche, you know, it's, I mean, it's really more looking at, you know, the records of those people and not necessarily their family history although you know being the daughters it's technically part of it so uh, yeah i'm gonna put that d tier d tier yeah so all right let's check chat how's chat doing um let's see all right oh i see yeah oh thank you matt for uh helping highlander uh figure things out um just reading through yeah <laughs> thank you to matt one of uh i i never remember who's a mod and who's an admin and which one's higher or which one's lower i always i don't know but matt is one of my admins or mods or you know he's one of the people along with uh charlie uh who helps me in a huge variety of ways they they are so helpful so everyone put a put a clap emoji in the chat for for matt and charlie um, and then also uh, another shout out for uh, Chris Ferrello, who I, I'm, I apologize if I'm butchering your last name. I know I've heard you, how you pronounce it, uh, but you know he helps out a bit here and there. And then also Mattias, uh, who used to help on the server, he's stepped away for a bit, but yeah. Um, so uh, just read through a couple more of these. All right, yeah. So we'll just jump back to doing these. So, all right, Dead Fred. Now, this is a website that I have heard of. I feel like I. This is one of those old websites that's been around for a while. Unless the other thing is, I could also be mixing this up with Blood and Frogs, which is like a Jewish genealogy, old school Jewish genealogy website. Um, but this is a website that I feel like I've heard of, but I have never used. So hey, if you've done if you've used Dead Fred, let me know. All right. Portal de Archivos Españoles. <laughs> I I know, I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. This is a website I have been on. I have not really used it much. Um, you know, being from a Sephardic ancestry, it's always kind of like, ooh, I want to kind of look into Spain and Portugal. But I've kind of found just for some reason, as soon as I kind of start getting into the 15th century of things, or even the 16th century and 15th century, where I'm dealing with like processos and things like that. I mean, for one, I'm mostly on Tor de Tumbo, which has most of that stuff. But then on top of that, with the families that I research, like I don't have a huge interest necessarily in getting that far back because for one, it's like, I don't feel super comfortable in those archives. Um, you know, it's not the easiest to go through. Um, but yeah, so it's it's a website I don't use much. Having used, I mean, I almost want to put it under never used, even though I've been on it and I've kind of like tested it out a bit here and there. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'll put it never use, even though technically I've been on it. Technically I have. Okay. Family Echo. Now this is a site. Oh, no, I know what I can. Family Echo is a site that I learned about, never used. Um, so I really can't speak to the user ability of it, but I think it's mostly just kind of technology. Um, exactly, it was like a was some sort of a niche. Yeah, look, you can even see I clicked on. Okay, so yeah, so it was like a uploading Jedcoms sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I, I, oh yeah, I guess <laughs> I'm looking, I just looked at the screen and realized you all can't see what I was looking at. Um, here, let's. let's right. So yeah, so here's, here's, here's family echo just from the looks of things. It's definitely an early two thousands looking website. Um, yeah, but I, I've never used it. I don't think it really would be genealogically useful. I'd be very curious if it's genealogically useful, but I think it's just kind of like a, it's something to help you in building your tree more than, you know, something helping you research your tree. Um, so, you know, I guess technically this is one I should put in never used as well. Um, yeah, I, I've never used it. So where did it go? Where did it go? I just, what did I do? It? Where did I put it? Don't tell me I put it somewhere. It should be. Am I going crazy? Am I just missing it? Where'd Family Echo go? Oh, it's down here at the end. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Here's the the Genie Vlogger Discord server for anyone who's on Twitch. But also, I'll just put it, put it up so you can see the URL for uh, anyone who's on um, YouTube. So let's see. What are our numbers? Got two on Twitch, five on Facebook, 74 on YouTube. All right, all right. So, and thank you everyone for joining today, too. I know we're an hour and a half into it, but yeah, thank you, thank you. So, all right, next website, Family Search. Now, Family Search is a site that's definitely going to be up here, definitely at least B tier, possibly up to A tier. I use this site probably couple of times a week at least sometimes more sometimes less um you know it has a couple of things to it the two biggest things that i use being the records database which is like you know their biggest thing you know it's they are going out they're digitizing records they you know have the family history libraries which you know you can't really order microfilm and microfiche like you used to granted most of it's online now but the, you know, they, they just have so much stuff that isn't on Ancestry or elsewhere because they're going and digitizing it themselves. Um, you know, granted, a lot of the, or not a lot of it, but some of it you have to go to their libraries to see because of the contracts they sign. But, I mean, it is definitely one of those places where, like, for me, when I'm doing my workflow, I mentioned, you know, I go into Ancestry, I build the trees, and then I kind of go through the hints. And that's kind of, you know, the first thing, just go through the hints, because it's just, it's an easy thing to do. But once you go through the hints, then you want to start searching the databases, because the hints aren't going to catch everything. And so you do the search of the databases, and, you know, I'll do a search of the database on Ancestry and Family Search as one of my, like, you know, first things. So definitely high up there. So it's definitely going to be, I think, above B tier. Now, in terms of user friendliness, I kind of think it could be a lot better. They updated the website, I want to say, in the past few years. I forgot when, and it certainly is a bit better. But I find that their search function is kind of clunky. Um, there are some things I like about it. Like I like the fact that you can do year ranges for, you know, events, births, deaths, marriages, stuff like that. So, you know, if you want to search, you know, okay, well, from 1912 to 1926, I know it's somewhere in there. Whereas if you go on, you know, Ancestry, you only have, you know, plus or minus one year, plus or minus two, plus or minus five, which, yeah, that's great. But, you know, 
I'd really like to be able to set the range specifically and family search you can do that which is great um the catalog that they have is kind of difficult to go through but it can be very useful once you do kind of understand how to do it um but part of the issue with their catalogs being difficult is that the labeling of things are sometimes just you know just generic organization labels of you know a7b3249g8 <laughs> you know stuff like that i don't know if anyone else has run across stuff like that but i do that i find that all the time where i'm trying to find stuff and i'm going through the catalogs of stuff and it'll like not have names it'll have weird labels like that um so it's like each different catalog entry you go into it can kind of be different um so that's the database side the other thing that i use a lot and i use this probably much more than the family tree uh software they have for family search and that's the family search wiki which is probably one of the greatest things available for genealogists most especially in terms of learning a new population group because that's the thing with genealogy that i feel like a lot of people don't give enough credence to is that not only do you just have all of these various cultures and groups of you know people and countries with different record sets and different ways of organizing it different places to find it and all of that but then on top of that you have all of these even more niche groups scattered all over the place where you know maybe you know they they weren't geographically located in you know one specific area but multiple areas like sephardic jews are all over the place and ashkenazi jews even though they kind of have a genetic origin in one area their descendancy spread well throughout the world and so even then once you're looking you know if i'm going to look at ashkenazi jewish okay well i'm going to look at ashkenazi jewish but kind of ashkenazi jewish are we looking at you know a german you know austro-hungarian empire ashkenazi jewish are we looking at dutch ashkenazi jewish are we looking at pale of settlement ashkenazi jewish and then even once you've broken that down then there's a question of okay well if it was dutch ashkenazi jewish were they dutch ashkenazi jews in amsterdam or were they somewhere else within the netherlands you know maybe they were up in friesland or you know the other question of well okay maybe they were uh you know in the pale of settlement then you have different areas you know you've got your southern area where it's kind of like you know ukraine present day ukraine romania moldova then you've got your you know galicia and yeah i i won't need i don't need to name every single one but basically there's just so many different population groups within population groups and the family search wiki makes it just so easy to learn about just so many groups then the third thing being the uh family tree building software on family search which i think it is the worst of the collaborative family trees so collaborative family trees we're talking about um you know family trees where you're not building your own tree you are building one big world family tree that is then all merged together so there's three big ones there's family search genie wiki tree my personal lineup of collaborative trees it goes genie wiki tree family search um i think genie and wiki tree are usually the ones that people kind of mix back and forth unless you're part of, i find this is the interesting thing and maybe it's just the, you know they're biased but i find a lot of the the folks who are actually connected to the mormon church are the ones who use family search more that's not an all the time but uh i am kind of curious uh what what everyone thinks so i'd be in the blah, blah, i can't talk right now in the comments post in order which of the three what are your three favorite collaborative trees going from you know with genie family search and uh and wiki tree which are your three favorite three in order so one two three um and I'll put some of those up on the on the tree, uh, on the tree on the screen. Um, now, one of the things that a lot of people will say against collaborative trees is, you know, they'll be like, "Oh, well, I go on Family Search and there's so many errors. I go on Genie and there's so many errors. I go on WikiTree and there's so many errors." And while that is true, that's also where the beauty of collaborative trees lies: is the sense that 
if you find an error on a collaborative tree, you can fix it. Whereas if you find an error on somebody's ancestry tree, I, I think I mentioned this before. If you find an error on someone's ancestry tree, you're then going to have to contact them or comment or something like that and hope they possibly change it. But otherwise there's not really much you can do. So it's like, you know, it, it's a mix. But then also at the same time, I think, you know, I always find it funny when all the different people who prefer one website will say, you know, well, one has more errors than the other and blah, blah, blah. And I think once again, it just comes down to something like we deal with DNA where certain population groups just are better represented on some DNA websites versus others. And it's the same in collaborative trees. You know, you go on Genie, they have by far the best Jewish tree out of all of them, in my opinion, in terms of Sephardic Jewish trees and Ashkenazi Jewish trees. Um, in fact, when I did the Wiki Tree Challenge, I know that was like one of the things that I was excited about was that that was like the first time that the uh, Dutch Sephardic community had really been well represented within Wikitree. And before that, there was only just kind of a few scattered here and there. And now it's extremely robust. But then like on Genie as well, I know Genie actually, oddly enough, has like one of the greatest South, I think it, I think it's, um, what is it? Is it Indian or Pakistani? They have one of the best Indian or Pakistani trees, I think. And then also like one of the best for Swedish. Like a lot of people who do Swedish research are often on Genie. Um, and then family search, obviously, I think there's a, a more of a, a bend towards, you know, Mormon church families. But like one thing that I found that's been very useful there is they have a lot of uh, Danish um, and, a, and a good amount of Swedish. I guess you could say a good amount of Scandinavian as well overall. So um, let's see. Uh, let's see where some people are saying. Katie likes Wikitree better than Family Search, but where's Genie in all of it? <laughs> uh, Brian says Wikitree for me, hands down. The other two are toss ups, as don't use often. Understandable. John Tyner, Wikitree, Family Search, Genie. I'm not too surprised. I am a little surprised you did Family Search above Genie, but I knew you were going to do Wikitree on uh, as number one. Um, Charlie, I've only used Genie a little bit, barely used Family Search. Uh, let's see, any others? Michael, one wiki tree, and that's all that I use. Gina says Family Tree because it's still free. Yeah, and wiki tree is free. Uh, Genie, and, and I mean, Genie does have a paywall, but it's it, it's a limited paywall. So there's a lot that's free, which I guess you could say about a lot of websites too, but. I don't know. Personally, for me, I feel like Genie's worth it. But then again, I'm also a huge Genie fanboy. And then Wikitree last. These last two have too many paywalls. Wait, Wiki? I I, I don't think Wikitree has a paywall. I thought Wikitree is uh, free. Um, yeah, my, that's, Michael says Wikitree is no paywall. Um, the big thing about Wikitree, which I see Michael says, Wikitree demands sourcing, which I think is the thing that gets a lot of people off their website and it's kind of on purpose is that people will go to try to add stuff and then it's really difficult because you have to add the sourcing and do it a certain way. Otherwise it'll constantly say like, no, you can't do it. No, you can't do it. And so I think that gets a lot of the people out of there who don't really know as much of what they're doing. Um, and it also forces everybody to kind of double check what they're doing. Um, you know, Genie does have a lot of great sourcing and, uh, uh, ways to add different stuff but it's not required when you add something whereas wikitree it is required um let's see any other anyone else ranking anything um yeah okay so no other ranks there so all right so with family search i think for me the big question is a tier or s tier and i think i'm gonna go a tier and just because what it does have that does make it so great is not too dissimilar to what is had like ancestry but with ancestry i feel like you do get a bit more uh, the website's a bit easier to use um and then with the dna stuff i mean granted ancestry dna is something to consider differently but yeah so i mean family search is definitely you know a great website to use um Let's go to the next. All right. Phil A. Now, this is a site I've 
heard about. Yeah, that's right. This is the French, the French archives. Um, so yeah, I have, uh, I have not used this website. I have heard of it. Um, I, you know, especially when I used GenieNet, which was just for a little bit, and it was just because I was building uh, one side of a tree that kind of went into France, and they had a lot of someone had put up a lot of information on that family on GenieNet. But with Phil A, um, I haven't used it much. Let's see. All right, so I know a lot of um, a lot of my Nunes. Well, I don't know if Nunes follows cousins, but there were a lot of Sephardic relatives of mine who are in Bayonne and Bordeaux, most specifically the Robles family. So let's uh, let's see see what we get from Robles. Let's see what can we now oh is it is it just Paris or is it let's see let's see what places we can choose. Alright let's do Bordeaux. Oh nice Now, how do I just see the to consult? <laughs> okay. All right, interesting. So yeah, I've never used this. Looks like, I mean, I see all these locks. So yeah, premium information, so you've got to pay for it. But I mean, we've got civil registration. So births, marriages, deaths. A lot of other records so it looks like a nice website seems seems very straightforward definitely not one of those websites that has that sort of like you know <laughs> early 2000s sort of look or late 90s so isaac robles ah yeah all right so we're not gonna dive much further into it but interest so yeah so i've never i i've never truly used it i mean i guess i just used it right now but i've never truly used that website so that's gonna go under never used all right find a grave is daniel loftus in the chat if he's not i, I everyone go and tweet and tell daniel jump in jared's Jared's live stream. He's talking about find a grave. <laughs> so find a grave for anyone who's been following the channel. I think um, I think everyone kind of knows find a grave. It's a very notorious website for a few different reasons. Um, I'm going to edit. I just noticed my screen's a little. Yeah, make it bigger. You all want to see my face much better. <laughs> all right, all right. I never knew Robles was a never knew Robles was a French surname. Always saw it as a Spaniard one and Latino. So many Latinos with Robles. It is the Robles name is from one of my Sephardic families, which traced from uh, Spain, I think, or Portugal. So yeah, Portuguese Iberian name surname definitely. So oh. Jewish is what you meant. Well, the thing is, is with Sephardic surnames, they aren't necessarily Jewish surnames. They are Spanish and Portuguese surnames commonly adopted by Jews. Very similar to Ashken most Ashkenazi names. It's just, you know, there are certain surnames that kind of lived on in Jewish families, but would probably died out in the non-Jewish families that had them. And then it seemed like it was much more, you know, like Greenstein or Goldberg or something like that. It certainly seems much more Jewish, but you could possibly find someone who's, you know, German with that name. Um, all right, let's see. Here's a question. How about Wifel? Have you already got your haplogroup analyzed there? I remember you, you've done your whole genome sequence from Nebula Genomics. Oh! Great question, because that's two things that I didn't mention before when we were going through the DNA stuff. So Yful, um, that is a website that I use a good amount of time. Um, I've talked about it in a few videos, including my whole genome sequence video, as Adam mentioned, um, which was the test through Nebula Genomics, which I'll talk about Nebula as well. Um, Yful is a great website, but it is very difficult to use, very clunky. It definitely definitely has that early 2000s sort of feel to it but it is extremely useful and i find it 
a lot easier to browse through the Y-Full tree and the mitochondrial tree on Y-Full than it is through the block trees and the, 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 the trees that they have for family tree DNA. Um, granted, they have a lot of different ways to view it on family tree DNA. Um, but beyond that, YFL is kind of limited in its genealogical usefulness, kind of low. So YFL would probably be a C tier. If it, I would, I would put it C tier. And then you mentioned the whole genome sequence with nebula genomics. Uh, so I highly recommend for anyone who's not uh, doesn't know about this, go check out my video where I did this, um, uh, did that test and. I liked the test because, you know, it gives you your whole genome. It gives you the ability to look at every single read in depth. Um, when I did the video reviewing it, that was kind of before I'd really started working in investigative genetic genealogy and doing IgG work allowed me to learn a lot about DNA reading and the DNA equipment and stuff. So now I understand a lot more about that stuff. But when you watch that video, you'll see me be like, I don't know if this is useful or not, but it actually, there is a usefulness to it, but it allows you to do that. But the main thing that Nebula has is its health. It has constant new health studies being put into their website and then telling you what variants you might have or not have with it. So not really genealogically useful, but they do have it where you can link your um, your whole genome sequence kit to YFL. For, for a few years there, they un unfortunately advertised that they were in the works to make it compatible with family tree DNA so you can link it in, kind of like how you can link your genie stuff to family tree DNA. And they had that on their website. It was a selling point for a lot of people. And I know a lot of people were really angry when they announced that, oh yeah, it actually isn't going to happen. Things didn't quite work out. At least that's that was my understanding of it. So it was just, yeah. So with the Nebula Genomics, I think that one would probably fall D tier. It is great. It's very cool for the in-depth DNA testing, but genealogically useful very low i also i'm not on the website a whole lot um and just you know i think the the whole thing with the you know them promising a, a collaboration with family tree dna just left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths and i mean i think that's probably like the one thing that kind of like i am a little regretful in terms of like you know with the the video that i put out on them is that was one of the things i talked about is they say they're gonna do this and i think a lot of people watching my video were convinced to buy it because Oh, Jared says that they say they're going to do this. And so, you know, you know, I'm not culpable in a sense for it, but it, there's a, you know, as someone advertising them, you know, I certainly feel a little bit of, uh, of, uh, not responsibility necessarily, but you know, yeah. So big reason why I want to say that now is so anyone who does want to look into it and watches my video knows. Yeah. That's it, as far as the last I heard, it's not happening maybe in the future somehow, but I think Gene by Gene, the company that runs Family Tree DNA, didn't want it to happen. Um, okay. Uh, we could also get Kyle from Discord in here to talk Find a Grave. Well, honestly, just put the beams out for Find a Grave. There's probably a lot of people that might want to hop in and say their their piece. Which actually, I'm curious, is Billion Graves in here? I don't see it. Wow, they put Find a Grave, but not Billion Graves. So we'll talk about that. So, okay, so find a grave. We need to talk about find a grave. This is such a useful website, but it's so disappointing in so many ways. Uh, for one, user friendliness. I think it's low. When they did the overhaul of the website a few years back, a lot of people hated the new search stuff. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I also didn't hate it enough to really like you know, not care that much. Um, or yeah, but like, you know, it was just, it, it just, it, it always kind of felt clunky, you know, and their update certainly makes the website look better, but it still kind of has that, I guess I want to say early 2010s look to it, you know, um, which, you know, it's not terrible, but it's also kind of like, you know, not the greatest. Uh, they do have a lot of older stuff too, that they kind of kept over from their early years. So there is some stuff that looks kind of like late '90s version of it, uh, but if you if you go to the the Wayback Archive and look at old 
ver versions of the uh, of the website. It looks very different. It's funny, um, but the usability that's kind of a big downside. Um, I feel like they could probably, I you know, I don't have the ideas for it, but I think that they could probably improve their search functionality to make searching a lot easier. Um, it is great that they have collab. Well, they're owned by Ancestry, but they've they have it where fin Find a Grave is integrated in the Ancestry, so you can get the hints through there. And yeah, the biggest thing to talk about Find a Grave, I think, is the major issues everybody's having with them especially in what I term the body counters. I know a lot of others have called them vultures and then there's, you know, just tons of different names, but basically the users on Find a Grave who scour obituaries and funeral home listings and just all sorts of places so that they can get just as many different or just, just get their numbers as, as high as possible for, you know, profiles they manage and all that. Uh, the gamification of the website which you know in some ways i you know i talk about the gamification and i mentioned it in the video i did about finding grave in a very negative light but at the same time i do kind of enjoy gamification of stuff i mean that you know it you know it is just fun game sort of stuff and you know like that's one of the you know even though i don't focus gravely or you know really intently on my numbers on genie it is something that like every once in a while I go and look at my statistics and it's like, oh, this is really cool. Like, you know, I've added this many people over 12 years and I've done this and that, you know, it's like, oh, that's awesome. Um, but when it comes to, you know, some stuff, I guess there is a question of, you know, is, you know, how, how useful is all of that gamification? And I think for me, you know, I don't necessarily want them to get rid of the quote unquote gamification of it, the, you know, all the numbers and stuff. I think they could limit it in some ways, but I think they, you know, what really needs to happen more than anything is they need to start identifying some of these users who are doing that. They need to set some guidelines that bar them from doing that, which I think they already do. But then the problem is, is that as far as I know, they set these rules and then users are still breaking those rules, but nothing happens. And that's what I think needs to change. They need to start banning and blocking users. I mean, it, I say it all the time. I know a lot of other genealogists say it all the time who complain about these users is that they are only a small percentage of the users on their website. And if that is truly the case, which I feel confident it is, they find a grave should not be scared of banning or kicking out these users or warning them or whatever they need to do. Because if it's truly only a small percentage of the people on the website doing that, then it shouldn't affect them that much. Granted, they probably like the more, you know, the more memorials and everything they have on the website, the better for them because the more they can be found. But also, it looks really bad on them, obviously. I mean, I did my video. I've seen so many articles that have come out about it. And then it's like, you know, every tragedy, every major, somebody just passed away. It's like I'm always seeing Daniel or somebody else posting, well, find a grave, did it again. And honestly, I don't, I've never, I never hear about the actual users being called out. They always, you know, it's always privacy. When in reality, you can go on find a grave and you can, you can find these users pretty easily. Um, you know, not, not, not that all of them that you'll find this way are going to be the bad ones, but you can go on find a grave and look at what are the most recent added uh, memorials and just start scrolling through it. And you can even do it most recent added memorials for people who died and you can put it, you know, November, 2023, or I, maybe you can't get that specific, but I think you can. And then look and see, and then all of a sudden you'll notice a lot of the same people doing the same thing. And you'll notice the photos from the obituaries and you'll notice all the things that are the telltale sign. And it's like, it's right there. Why, why can't we do something? So, now to the actual scoring, now that I've gone through a lot of this stuff. I want to say Find a Grave is going to be somewhere. It's either B or C. I feel like it, 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 it should be in B tier in terms of just how absolutely useful it is. Most especially in just, you know, the users that are on the website who are great users. 
I can't even begin to go on about some of the users who have helped me out from finding a grave. Uh, one who helped me find my great grandfather's grave and the uh, death uh, record because he died in LA, which is really hard to go through their death records in the 40s. You've got to go through the catalogs of stuff like I mentioned before. And you know, if, if he had not helped me, I'm sure I would have eventually found it, but it would have been a long, longer of a time. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, I think I think it is B tier. It, the usefulness just outweighs the bad users just enough to kick it up to B tier. Um, great point. Obituary stuff is copyrighted in most places. And one of the things that a lot of find a grave users do, which is putting find a grave in serious possible legal uh, difficulties is they don't have a system against copyrighted photos that are used in obituaries you know i mean you know granted i think most photos that people are putting up for obituaries aren't going to be something that you know they're going to be like oh this is copywritten nobody better use it but you know i i think i think finding grave has it where if someone complains or reports it they take it down so they kind of have a way but i do wonder if that they you know they could run into issues where Nobody reports something and there's a user that goes and puts up a bunch of photos copyrighted by one organization or one person and they decide I'm going to take them to court. I'm, I'm going to go after them about it. You know, no cease and desist, which, you know, there are some people that do that. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. I just hit two hours, so I'm going to go grab some water real quickly I'm going to uh, leave uh, leave this um, ranking up so you all chat amongst yourself. It should only be a minute. Okay, so give me a second. I'll be right back. Y'all didn't miss me too long, did you? <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, I haven't. I haven't caught up with chat for a minute. Let's see. Um, uh, Tara asks, "Is finding graves same thing as building graves?" No, but very similar websites. And even though they don't have billion graves on here, I'm gonna bring it up just for a second. Let me. So this is Billion Graves. It's very similar to Find a Grave. Um, not exactly the same though. And I know that there are a lot of people that prefer using Billion Graves over Find a Grave for different reasons. Um, but I believe that they have a paywall, whereas Find a Grave is completely free. Yeah, they have the, the Billion Graves Plus. Um, but in my, I've, I've actually barely ever used Billion Graves. I think I did like a trial years back, and then I just kind of was like, oh, okay, that's good. Um, but yeah, if anyone does know, uh, you know what your opinion is with Billion Graves, um, you know, I've heard that it, it, it's a great website for, you know, stuff with Find a Grave. 
um or not something find a grave but you know great website for finding graves like find a grave um but not quite the same um i believe one of the big things with billion graves that a lot of people talk about especially versus find a grave is that their search functionality is much better um so let's see it's been like i said it's been a few years so technically if they had billion graves in the tier list it would probably go under um never used <laughs> uh but oh wow oh wow it's in, oh it's, it's going by location okay well that's interesting to know um yeah so yeah interesting uh interesting website but very curious to hear from those who have used it karma says you can't edit on billion grades you can add pictures but can't annotate well that's kind of annoying especially because uh for like he jewish graves there's hebrew on it that a lot of people will not only annotate but then transcribe because it'll say you know jared son of richard you know stuff like that so I saw Ancestry already gas the photo of my mom's headstone. Yeah. Someone, somebody was uh, telling me, or actually, I think I saw comments on one of Daniel's posts um, that they like knew somebody who was one of those users on Find a Grave. But they would take it a step further. And apparently, they'd go through cemeteries and take like terrible photos of graves, but just like, you know, click, 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 not caring at all how readable it is or, or not, and then putting it up and then. When they do that, you you can't put in a new request because it'll say that you already have a photo. There's already a photo, and then you're stuck with this photo that's not legible, and it just you know it's like talk about ruining the website. Um, so, all right, let's get back to the tier list. I wasn't sure how long this. Um, this stream was going to go because I knew it would take me a while, especially me being so talkative. Um, so, all right. So getting to the next, so find my past, find my past is a website that I probably use once a month, once every other month, not a lot. Um, it's kind of one of those websites where it's like, you know, did a search on ancestry, did a foot search on family search, did a search on my heritage. Um, you know, didn't find anything. And then, you know, if I look and see, oh, well, there's a certain catalog on find my past, then I'll go look there. But find my past isn't really much of a one that I, you know, I'm not on a lot. Um, I'd be very interested to see what a lot of people think about find my past. Um, cause they are kind of one of the bigger genealogy database websites, but I just don't use them a whole lot. And the few times I have used them, you know, I've found they have some unique stuff. Uh, but I guess for me, gosh, I hate, I, I don't want to be mean. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if it's D or F tier. I feel like it's D tier because it is, from what I remember, their search functionality was really good. Um, so the user functionality, I think, was good. Um, like you know easier to use than like you know some of these other websites so yeah, we'll do a d tier i think that's that's good um all right so next fold three uh fold three being a um a, a subsidiary of ancestry or a sister company or you know it's one of those websites that I would say probably 90% of the people that use it have their membership through their ancestry membership. I don't know if there's a whole lot of people buying just a fold three um, membership, at least genealogy wise. I'm sure there are military people or military historians and others where, you know, they have zero interest in the ancestry. They just want fold three. Same thing with newspapers.com. It's kind of a similar company, although I think newspapers is much more, um, probably, you know, there's much more demand for it than it would be fold three. Um, how often do I use it? A couple of times a month. D 
decent decent amount. I mean, you know, any sort of military history related to uh, American wars, uh, British wars, um, within the past couple of hundred years, especially. Uh, and then, you know, there is a lot of other military stuff in there, too. I'm trying to remember what other countries they have. I think they have some Australian records and New Zealand records and Canadian records. But, you know, much more niche. So, you know, if you're researching a military ancestor, you're going to be using it. I think the website, the usability of it is like so-so. There are some parts about it where, you know, the advanced searches are awesome. There's a lot of pot stuff to put in there, but then it's really kind of difficult to filter stuff. And I found that sometimes when I do advanced searches, I'll put in what I would think would bring up like, you know, let's say there's an entry I've already found and I'm trying to find more that are more like that and just trying to filter down, you know, a couple hundred results to fewer to go through. And then I'll change things. And then all of a sudden what I, you know, first found, which I thought would come up with how I change the advanced filters, all of a sudden it can't come up. And so that's really annoying. Um, but like with the ability to filter by years, the ability to filter by obituary, if it actually can tell it's an obituary, uh, which I think it can most of the time. And then I think there's it, there's other filters. So it's like, there's some filters that it's like so great. And then others that it's like, mm, yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm starting to mix up some of the newspapers.com stuff too. Um, but with Fold3, you know, it's, I think that there's a lot that they could do to just make the flow of researching on the website a lot better. Um, and then in terms of genealogy usefulness, I mean, it, it's decently useful because they have a lot of records available that, you know, give a lot of in-depth information and even if they don't necessarily have the record available, they have a lot of indexed information from websites where you can then order the record. You know, a lot of government websites, depending on where they serve. So I'm going to drop Fold3 in B tier. I think, actually, you know what? You know what? I'm going to go C tier. I think it's C tier. Um, it is a great website, but I think, I think maybe C tier fits a bit more. All right, so going on now, Genealogy Online, the Netherlands. So this is a website that I have used a good amount um, ever since they uh, did that collaboration with Ancestry, where now I think all of the Genealogy Online trees are on Ancestry. I haven't used it as much. Um, let me pull it up for everybody. Um but one of the things with researching in the Netherlands, just in general, is the fact that there is a law that literally says that any records the government that were made by the government and digitized by the government and put up online have to be available for free. And so there's just so much available online. Um, so this is genealogy online. This is, you know, family trees. So we'll look at the family that I talk most about, the Nunez Vaz family. And so let's see if we can find an ancestor I recognize. Um, yeah, that's uh, one of the, not my ancestor, but the brother of one of my ancestors. But then it's actually a double cousin thing. Abraham Nunez Vaz, I descend from his brother, Jacob Nunes Vaz, or wait, no, Raphael, no, Jacob, yeah, Jacob Nunes Vaz, yeah, Jacob Nunes Vaz, who married Yael's sister, um, Simcha, so, yeah, but so it's, it's these family trees, and then when you go to them, it has all of this other information, no, I'm good, and I know you all don't really speak Dutch, so... Let's uh, translate the page. <laughs> I'm sure some of you do, but so it's, you know, it's these big family trees and then it comes with, it has all of this different information that goes along with it. And it's, you know, it, it's a very fun, cool website and, you know, you can visualize a different thing, a bunch of different things. And then even better, you can actually look at, let's translate this page too. 
you're going to actually look at, Hey, what, what records are, where, you know, where's some of this information coming from? And, you know, granted right now we're looking at a bunch of family search entries. So let's see, view suggestion. Oh, you got to get the plus. Oh, I didn't even, I, I always thought it was a free website. I didn't realize they had a paywall. Huh? I wonder if that's even, well, I, you know what? I guess maybe that's legal because they don't host records. They just host family trees. But yeah, so, okay. So back, back to the ranking of it. So with Genealogy Online, how much do I use it? I haven't used it in years. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the fun stuff that they give is actually also available on Vivaz V, which uh, is not on here. They do have Open Archhaven. But um, yeah, Vivaz V is probably one of my favorite Dutch websites, second to the Amsterdam Archives, which is my absolute favorite. But Genealogy Online, don't use it that much. So it's definitely going to kind of be lower. Um, from the looks of the website, it doesn't look like they've updated it since the last time I've used it. Um, so definitely early 2010 looks. So the user friendliness of it is somewhat straightforward, but you know, it is kind of clunky looking. And then genealogy information wise for the Dutch stuff, I feel like, you know, it is super helpful when you find a new tree. Um, and, you know, you need to review the trees and stuff, but it can be a very useful source, uh, you know, for people that aren't really on the Dutch websites because Dutch genealogy, you're not researching any ancestry or my heritage or, you know, places like that. You're researching on these Dutch websites like Open Archiven, Vivas V, Amsterdam Archief, um, the Nord Archief, the, you know, all the different ones uh, that are that are out there. Uh, so it's definitely on the lower end of the Dutch websites and, but it's still useful. So I'd probably put this, I'm going to put this C tier. Gosh, it's funny. You know, now that I'm going through everything, I kind of want to drop Cindy's <laughs> list to F tier. Just, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, Cindy's list. It is a good website, but just the more I'm talking about the reasoning for everything, it's like, well, I definitely put these above above these other ones so speaking of which find my past definitely oh we can there we go put that above it and then yeah that's all yeah that's good all right so let's keep let's keep going um i'm sure i don't dehydrate myself okay genealogy bank now this is a website that i use a couple of times a year uh, not much. Um, it does have some great newspaper databases that aren't available elsewhere. Personally, in my the user friendliness of it, I kind of feel like it's somewhat clunky. Um, it's you know, it, it's not too difficult to search for, through, but it's it, it does feel kind of clunky and kind of like find my past. It's one of those sites that they do have some unique stuff, but. I constantly find that, and I guess this is kind of like American Ancestors too, that I find when I do searches on there, I will find a lot of stuff that I found elsewhere, but it'll be like a compilation of stuff that I found, you know, one from this website, one from this website, one from this website. Um, I don't know if they have a specific like region of the US or even, even if it's necessarily US based, I think it's mostly US based that they do, but yeah, I don't know. So for me, Genealogy Bank is going to be a D tier one. Getting texts. So let's see. Let's see how everyone's doing. Check the chats and all of that. So, oh, my my streaming number went down just a little bit from the last I looked. <laughs> Nobody believe in me in the middle of the stream. Come on. You got to stay the whole time. Catching up on everything. Yeah, Genealogy Online got absolutely purged. Almost everything was privated or deleted. Yeah, I mean, basically, I think uh, that I think that had to do with the whole once the ancestry did the deal with them, and a bunch of people were like, no. So, which is I have found with a lot of the Dutch cousins that I've connected with and Dutch researchers that I've connected with. I guess not a lot of them, but there I found that there are some that are very oddly like overly private, in my opinion. 
um you know i mean everyone's privacy you know do it how you choose but yeah all right so let's keep going i'm actually starting to get a roll here i'm only at what two and a half hours so let's i wonder if yeah i think i'll definitely end up getting to three hours but i wonder if i'll get to three and a half we'll see <laughs> All right, GenieNet. GenieNet, French-based website. Um, they are a, mostly a family tree software hosting website. I don't think they have documents on the website. I think it's just family tree hosting. They did for a while have DNA testing as well, but they just announced recently, and I think someone was asking me about this earlier in the stream, uh, that they're going to be taking down their DNA testing uh, features. I think it was too much money for them, and yeah. So they're 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 you know kind of a, a niche website where it's you know family trees mostly from France, but a good amount of kind of you know Western and Central Europe um, are represented in the trees, but. Just like Genealogy Online that we mentioned, GenieNet did a deal with Ancestry and maybe Family Search, but I think maybe it's just Ancestry, where their, their stuff is now searchable. So if you go on Ancestry, you look at your, um, your hints and stuff, if you have French Ancestry, you may see stuff coming from GenieNet trees. So GenieNet, uh, don't use it much. It is kind of a nice website. Um, you know, I have used it over the years uh, here and there. I'd probably say I, I use it maybe a couple of times a year. Um, it's just, you know, most of the time when I'm on there, I usually am researching a family that ends up, you know, having some sort of French connection or something. So this one I think is going to fall D tier as well. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I think that one's going to fall D tier. Um, it, it, I think Genealogy Online has a bit more to offer than GenieNet does. Um, I could be wrong just because both are websites that I use so rarely that, you know, things may have changed. So keep hearing GenieNet. I, I get so many people telling me with my pronunciation of genealogy that, you know, I probably pronounce other stuff wrong. So I know just guessing how uh my my youtube uh, channel is named i get people saying it all the time different ways the two main ones being the way i pronounce it genie vlogger but then another one which i hear a lot of people saying genie of vlogger which is kind of funny to me to because it kind of sounds like genie a vlogger <laughs> i don't know that's kind of stupid but yeah so i don't know jenny net genie net i don't know all right, so now, Genie. Oh, where is this going to go? I think pretty much everyone knows for me with how much I talk about it. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be an S tier. How often do I use it? Every day, all the time. Um, in terms of user friendliness, I will admit Genie is not necessarily the most user friendly. I think one of the big difficulties for a lot of people is just the fact that, um, you know, they go on there and then they get confused about stuff by hitting a paywall or trying to use the search functions or, you know, different stuff like that. Um, Genie does have a lot of free stuff to it, but there is, you know, the, the pro account that, you know, gives you more access and more ability to add stuff, which, you know, the way that the, um, the manager, I think he's the manager. I don't know exactly his title, but Mike Stengel, who runs Genie basically, which Genie is owned by My Heritage. For anyone who doesn't know, um, I think they basically call it like a sister company, but it, they, they own them. Um, and uh, with what Michael Mike Stengel says is that if you're on Genie and you keep hitting a paywall, then that probably means that you do need to pay for a membership because then you're using Genie in a way that you need to be able to use it properly you need to access that stuff so it's like you know it's one of those things where it's like i understand people hate paying for memberships paywalls are limiting you know especially for people that don't necessarily have a lot of disposable income it's like you know how important is learning your family history to you and especially with genie being a largely family tree hosting software granted i think it's one of the best 
uh, you know, it's something that, you know, isn't really as worthwhile for people when they can build their trees elsewhere for free and even a collaborative tree for free on family search or wiki tree. So, you know, I understand a lot of this stuff with that. Um, but, you know, there's so many things for me that just make Genie stand out that nobody else is doing. Um, for one, the tree functionality of looking through the tree and manipulating the tree. I think the only one that I've seen come close to it is Ancestry. And I wish there was a Genie Ancestry marriage of those tools where you could use Genie's ability to limit how many ancestor or descendant generations you see, as well as limiting it to only ancestors or or, well that's yeah but then like with ancestry they have the ability where you can like okay i want to look at it like this but i want to hide you know i want to hide all of the ancestors of my mom's side i only want to look at my dad's side but i still want to have it focus on me as the focal point so if they could build that together that'd be amazing um i see a bunch of comments coming in let me see what people are saying um Okay, how would you compare Genie to Family Search's collaborative family tree? Well, that's uh, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. I'll, I'll get get a bit more into that. Genie plus my heritage. Yeah. <laughs> Read. You have to pay for Genie and my heritage. Both. It's just stupid. No, I definitely, I definitely understand this sentiment. And for anyone who's doesn't, who's like, well, what do you mean? So Genie is owned by my heritage, as I mentioned. And when you go on Genie, one of the functionalities that is behind the paywall is a uh, MyHeritage source um, reference thing. Basically, it's telling you, we found records that are hosted on MyHeritage that we believe are connected to this person or this person or whatever. The thing is, is that even though you're paying for a pro membership to get that notification, to then go to MyHeritage and see that record you have to also have a MyHeritage account. So you can't just have a Genie account and then get it, or you can't just have a MyHeritage account and get it. And I honestly, I have been so surprised that they have never done a bundle membership like Ancestry does with uh, Fold3 and newspapers and stuff, because I think they would be getting a lot more people paying for stuff Um and, you know, I, I think it would just overall be a lot better than, you know, you don't necessarily have to make it as cheap as one single membership. But, you know, it is not, you know, if you're buying a member, if you want to use the full functionality of everything and do MyHeritage and Genie and buying both memberships, well, it'd be nice to have a bundle savings of some sort because it does sting when you know that they kind of, you know, they own the other and you got to be buying all these different memberships when you're already buying a membership to get the notification in a sense. Now, the notification is just one of three different notifications you get. So they have notifications of uh, MyHeritage sources, they have notifications of MyHeritage trees, and then they also have notifications of Genie trees. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff to definitely consider with that. So. Um, but now some, some of the stuff I love about Genie, one of the biggest ones, the name functionality. Now, this is something that I have found people don't like about Genie, which kind of surprised me. And their reasoning was, was that Genie had too many name fields that, you know, in their family cultures, they don't use it. So, you know, they feel like it's a, you know, it's a bad representation. I forgot, I forgot where the people were from that kind of felt that way because i think it was like a specific kind of region of the, or not the country of the world um but i remember that was surprising because to me i love the fact that you know genie has a first name field middle name field last name field maiden name field birth name field also known as field a display name field so you can you know if they had their name a certain way that would be the way they wanted displayed but their birth name was one thing their maiden name you know you can do that but even better then they have multi-language functionality so i'm gonna see if i can pull up a profile to kind of show this um in my family let's see what's what's one that might be a good one to show uh where i know there's gonna be multiple versions probably let's go new, new. We'll do typical me Nunez Vaz stuff. 
Um, make sure I pull it up and it has it. Okay, so here is one of my ancestors, Jacob Abraham Nunes Vaz. Okay, and he's my seventh great grandfather. So this is this is how it connects. And this is one of the other things I absolutely love about Genie. And one of the things that almost no one has, although WikiTree I think does have something like this now, is a find uh, a, a relationship path. So not only uh, how you're related, your closest related blood, but if I did show me, uh, which I'm not because I don't want to accidentally show private names that shouldn't be private because I am a uh, curator. And curators get special access to everything. Um, but it gives you the ability to see really distant relationships or what I call or what I call spaceballs relationship with a shout out to my cousin and genealogist Steve Jaron, who is the person who coined that term uh, for this. I mean, I guess technically, yeah. But the spaceballs relationship is when it's you know my first cousin's husband's great aunt's uh, second cousin's husband's great nephew. You know, just like this crazy, like, whoa, 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 you know, sort of thing. But the main reason that I showed you all this is the names here. So here, look, we have Jacob Abraham Nunes Vaz. Then we have his birth name, which was the Italian spelling of it when he was in Italy. Then we have his Dutch name. And notice that it's pretty much the same. It's just Nunes Vaz, V-A-A-S. And then Yaakov Ben Abraham Nunes Vaz. So that's his, um, you know, actually, here, let's uh, make sure that you all can see it. So, you know, we have the different names. And then if we go in and edit the profile and look at our names. So this is how it works. So look, so we have title. So, you know, doctor, whatever. But, you know, as they say, use it for, you know, actual honorifics, not just Mr. or Mrs. courtesy titles. But then you have your middle name or your first name, your middle name, your last name, suffix, your birth surname, the display name. So here I have one, one, that's part of the Nunes Vaz numbering, family numbering system I have. And then also known as, so here we have the transcribed version of his uh, Jewish, his Hebrew name. But then here, okay, so we have all of these languages. So you can add, so even if, Let's say it's not a major difference of spelling from one country to another, but there's just a subtle, you know, maybe in one country they just use an A, but then they move to another country and in that country they use A, E, whatever, you know, so you can just do simplified ones of that. So like they even have Hebrew and Yiddish, they have Ukrainian and Russian and Belarusian and, you know, other, so there's a lot that you can really specify and that's one of the reasons for me genie is like one of the best one of the best uh let's get this screen back to normal size actually and if anyone wonders why it looks like i'm scrolling so like chaotically sometimes the scroll wheel on my mouse broke and i i just ordered a new mouse today <laughs> thank you black friday deals so, yeah. So, okay. So that's, that's, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about Genie. Um, now in terms of some other stuff to mention, uh, just because I absolutely love Genie, I need to, the projects function that they have, I don't really know of any other websites that do something like this. If anyone does, let me know. Um, but basically you can create projects, which then you invite other people to, you can add different profiles to, you can add all sorts of information. So like here, the Nunes Vaz family, one that I created, I, you know, I have all this information. I break down the families. You can link to the different people in the trees, you know? So like, here's the, you know, here's the Italian Dr. Abram Nunes Vaz and, you know, um, just all, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then on top of the projects, they also have, you know, you can add all sorts of media, but then also you can add in documents if it's not a JPEG. And as well, you can do sourcing. Now the sourcing stuff I think is one of the more difficult ones for people. 
uh, to figure out. It's a little, you know, there's a there's a curve to it. It's not the straight most straightforward. And most of the time, a lot of the stuff that's being added, this is the stuff that's being added through the hints that are being given from my heritage or, you know, that kind of stuff. So a lot of times too, it'll just be, hey, this person has it in their tree is this, or like, you know, as someone mentioned before where they just constantly see photos that they uploaded years ago or information they uploaded years ago being uploaded by others. This is a, a, a photo that I took. Um, oh wait, I don't, okay. But this is a photo that I took of a printout that my uncle gave me of a, a marriage bond, a uh, basically an announcement that a marriage is going to happen for my great, you know, my seventh great grandfather, Jacob Nunes Vaz. And I took that photo in uh, 2009, I want to say. That was, I was a senior in college sitting in, <laughs> in my, my, my uh, living room taking that photo. And now I see it everywhere. Uh, even though I have a much better version of a high quality digitization of it now, but everyone, everyone still uses the folded up paper where I bent it. So the light didn't bounce off of it wrong. <laughs> so, okay. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of why I love Genie. There's, there's more to it than that, but you know, I'll, I can end up spending an entire hour going through it. But I think a big thing I do want to talk about is kind of the difference in terms of the collaborative trees because after genie i'm going to go through the other collaborative trees um so i forgot somebody asked it somewhere what i thought about it uh, i don't need to worry about bringing the comment up but so genie obviously that's a big s tier for me i think it's obvious i'm a big fanboy in all honesty part of why i'm a big fanboy of it i'd always been interested in genealogy throughout the years uh, ever since I was, I think, seven years old, I went to my cousin's bar mitzvah and my uncle had a printout of the Nunes Vaz line up to the 1600s. And I was like, what? You know, I had I had ancestors living then. And that's when, you know, the bug caught me. But throughout the years, it just kind of is like, you know, I do a little bit here, do a little bit there. I get, you know, like the old ancestry CDs that they'd send for anyone who's been around that long. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I started in the early 90s and, you know, I'd put it into the, you know, family tree software maker. And, or the, yeah. And I'd always hit a brick wall and then just lose interest because I was a little kid, didn't have the time or energy or ability to go around really to research. And so just would give up. But then it wasn't until I was in college and I found Genie that then like it really like was like oh my god yeah and i just became obsessed um i'd been on ancestry before that obviously in fact if you go to my ancestry profile you'll see i joined ancestry 2008 and genie in 2009 but even with that said even though i was interested in genealogy then and i was kind of trying to do a lot of stuff i do now uh it wasn't until i got to genie that it was like oh my it was like things clicked and that was when I started to find cousins of mine all over the world. And I mean, I think the first cousin I connected to was a uh, third cousin of mine who was in Australia. And so it's just, yeah, it just went crazy from there. So let's talk about, uh, all right. So we did talk about family search. Uh, now let's talk about WikiTree, the other collaborative tree. And WikiTree is one of those websites that I do use it a good amount. It wasn't until I recent years that I started doing it. Granted, I think it's the, well, no, it's been around for a while. And I want to say that I heard someone claiming that it technically had been around longer than Genie, but it just wasn't like public or something. So if anyone knows, I, I know I have some big wiki tree fans in the chat. So if you know what I'm talking about, let me know. Cause I feel like that's something I heard, but their website that I didn't use until more recently, part of it being that their user friendliness is purposely not the greatest. <laughs> and I think I mentioned this before. Uh, okay, let's see. Brian from uh, How We Got Here Genealogy said just celebrated 15 years this month. I don't know if you're talking about something else or if you're talking about uh, WikiTree, but I'm assuming you're talking about WikiTree because I was looking at the chat and I don't think it matches anything else. But yeah, um, yeah. So with WikiTree, um, you know that usability definitely makes it difficult. Okay, yeah, WikiTree. So yeah, 15 years this month, which 
I guess that's 2008, which I think Genie technically predates it then. Because I think Genie was started in 2007 or 2008. Maybe? I, I can't remember. I know I learned it when I did my video. My my love letter to Genie basically was that video. Um, all right, but Wikitree, at first I wasn't the biggest fan of it because of that usability stuff. And I also kind of, you know, felt that the few Wikitree users that I would interact with, and I don't remember who it was I was interacting with back then, but the few that I would, for lack of a better way of saying it, kind of seemed to have a stick up their butt like they they you know the, it was kind of a very you know snobby nose up attitude that i i got from them granted i know a lot of people feel the same way when they run into uh some of the heavy genie users um so maybe it's just a collaborative tree sort of thing where you just kind of feel this power you know almost like wikipedia which i used to be a wikipedian back in the day i edited hundreds of articles started of tons of articles and i yeah it's a whole thing with wikipedia but with wikitree you know it definitely has that more wikipedia like feel to it in the organization of things um now in as i mentioned before the way i rank the three it goes genie number one wikitree number two family search number three and you know one of the reasons why i think wikitree is definitely better than family search is that it is more reliable more often than not in my experience so i know i was kind of making fun of people saying you know oh well one has more errors than the other but uh you know the way i kind of put it isn't necessarily one has more errors than the other it just wiki tree kind of is a bit stronger than the others in its reliability which i guess is kind of saying the same thing in a different way but it all really comes back to the fact that they purposely make the ability to add stuff difficult so that a lot of bad erroneous information is not added and that the people adding things know what they're doing um so it's you know it's it's a bittersweet sort of thing it's like yeah it's very bitter because it's really annoying to add stuff. And I know every time I go to try to edit stuff in Wikitree, I'm always like, wait, what do I have to do? Wait, what do I need to add this here? And the, you know, but then at the same time, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, at least when you go on Wikitree, it's a lot harder to run into things that, you know, just some random user who doesn't really do genealogy can go and upload to the site, which is, I think that's what people run into with Genie and Family Search is that you get all these random users that will go on, spend a few days adding a bunch of stuff that, you know, they just think is right or what, you know, oh, this name is the same as this name, must be the same person and adds to Genie. And then nobody really researches that for, you know, whatever reason, it just stays there unfixed until someone finds it and then fixes it. Um, so, you know, Wikitree is definitely, definitely a tier in my opinion um i definitely you know i have i have my qualms about the website i have my qualms about some users uh but then again i guess that's the same thing across a lot of websites i have qualms about some other curators on genie myself uh so you know but wikitree i think definitely worthwhile website um you know one of those websites that i think is worth checking out if you have not um, at the very least, with collaborative websites, the number one thing that's great about them is because they're great cousin bait. And what I mean by cousin bait is that it's a great way for cousins to be able to find you or you to be able to find cousins. Because, you know, if you're working on a tree and someone else is working on a tree, you obviously have something, uh, you know, in common of interest. And a lot of times the reason you're working on the same trees is because you're related or at least semi-related even if it, you know maybe it's like you know little space ballsy or something you know my 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 or, yeah i don't know just different whatever all right let's continue i don't want to where where are we at now in time i've been going for two hours 48 minutes well um so numbers are staying decently strong gone down a little bit though down to 69 i was i think i was topping out there about high 80s for a while with everybody but we've only got one on twitch two on facebook oh and of course i start talking about that people leave oh he's talking about people on here i better leave <laughs> all right google 
Now this I this is I thought it was kind of funny when I saw this on here. Like I definitely understand why it's there. It's you know it's a genealogy tool, but you know I thought this was more genealogy websites and you know Google is a website that can be used for genealogy, but it's not a genealogy website. So you know how often do I use it? Every day, but I'm using it all the time for non genealogy stuff. So it's like I don't you know, but I am in terms of how often am I using it for genealogy? couple of times a week at least probably i mean it's you know i have a whole video about how one of my google searches allowed me to find an entirely new family side of my family uh granted i probably would have found it eventually through uh, other means but um yeah so so it is a great website but you know genealogy wise but then you know how useful is it truly for genealogy i mean it's you know okay it's just you know it's a uh research medium sort of thing so it's like you know I, it's funny it's like i almost want to put it in f tier because it's not a genealogy website but i do use it a lot even when just thinking of it in genealogy so um yeah i'll do i'll do uh you know what i am gonna do an f tier it's it's not a genealogy website i'm sorry it's not <laughs> deal with it Some still do have that stick, but then I found most of the people in the community are great. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of the deal everywhere. And that's, as I was saying it, that's kind of why I said it that, you know, well, you find it on Genie too. It's kind of like, you know, no matter where you go, you're going to find people you just don't get along with. So, you know, yeah. All right, let's see what else, uh, what else is, uh, other people saying. Oh, Tara, I don't know if you're uh, already gone, but good night. Thank you for, for being here. Um, yeah, Discord is very active. Wikitree has a server. You should have got a greeting from Wikitree Greeter. That is one of the cool things that really does set Wikitree apart too is that their volunteers are a step above and beyond. Uh, Genie has the curators, which I think the curators are a great system. Um, a lot of great curators in there, but the curators aren't quite as... Well, I mean, I guess some curators are, but they aren't quite as interactive, it feels, and just on top of co connecting with different users as some of the Genie curators are. I, 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 I'm kind of hesitant in saying it like that because it's like, you know, not everyone is, but I do feel like with Wikitree, you know, there's a lot to it. So the Wikitree server is extremely robust. The Wikitree challenges are just such a cool idea. It's such a great thing that they're doing with that. Because not only is it making Wikitree stronger and stronger, but I think that's a great way of gamification in terms of, you know, forcing people to do it right. You know, as opposed to kind of the gamification on Find a Grave where it's just numbers. With Wikitree, I don't remember the exact breakdown of when they did my challenge week, but I remember that I was like blown away at how in-depth it was and just how much of a fun activity it is so like even if you're not a big wiki tree uh user necessarily or something if you are not familiar with the wiki tree challenges go find out about them um go to the wiki tree youtube page i think they post them all there they're constantly doing all sorts of stuff there um max golden uh aon uh oh my gosh why am i why am i why am i blanking on uh, some of the other amazing people at wiki tree uh bu, 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 oh, come on oh gosh oh and i i see her face too i'm i feel so bad about it because she uh oh god i don't know all right but yeah shout out to the shout out to a lot, a lot of the people uh there so all right um all right let's get back into this so hey trust what is this i do not i i am not familiar let's look this up Trust. Interesting. So, digital library. Yes, Mindy. Thank you, Mindy. 
yeah they're the kind of i guess yeah they're kind of like the three like you know the three big wigs or whatever um and then you know there's also you know there, there are a few others as well uh greg he i i, I saw greg at uh, roots tech this year um i saw all of them at roots tech this year I think. yeah so yeah they gave me a wiki tree shirt and everything i have it yeah i have it downstairs i'm i should I, i'll rock it one time right now you can barely see it but i'm rocking this is a roots tech shirt for anyone who can, can't tell this is the 2000 year 2000 roots tech shirt it was the last roots tech in person before the pandemic and it was literally i think if i remember correctly i flew home it was like march 4th i flew home from roots tech and march 11th they declared the world health organization declared it a pandemic so i think everyone that went to roots tech 2020 basically kind of has a story of like yeah i was at roots tech and it was like oh my gosh and i actually remember johnny pearl was sick during that roots tech and i just i hadn't just started hearing about the you know of covid stuff but you know i'd kind of heard you know you heard a lot of uh, you know here and there and so when he was sick i was like oh man i hope he's not i hope he doesn't have that covid he just flew in from the uk spread it across the world so ah we we've found some i don't know if anyone mentioned this before but we have someone who's identified the map it's hamburg hamburg germany yeah, so I will, one little hint as uh, I do all the different streams for all of you who are going to catch a lot of my streams. I'm going to be doing a different, I'm going to try to do a different map like each stream. And each map will have some sort of connection to my own family tree. So for me, I have uh, ancestry that traces to Hamburg where they basically, actually it's a very interesting line of, of, of traveling. Basically they went, I think, Portugal to Spain to Bordeaux, to Hamburg, and then eventually to Amsterdam. Granted, this is, you know, I'm talking multiple generations doing these moves, but yeah. So, right. so oh, we see Just the Weeb says, I have a question. Feel, feel free to ask it. Uh, I mentioned this before in the stream that, you know, I'm going to try to answer questions as I go through. I cannot guarantee I will answer all the questions, but if you are on YouTube, there are super chats, I think they're called, where, you know, it's te technically a paid message, uh, which does help me out, and I greatly appreciate it, but if you do those, I guarantee I'll answer that question on uh, stream, assuming it's not a question that I, you know, can't answer on stream either because I don't, you know, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> either because I'm limited because of investigative questions or just other stuff, I don't know, so... All right. Oh, Brian's heading out. Thank you so much for hanging out, Brian. You have uh, a good night. Enjoy yourself uh, a pint. Uh, drink yourself a pint uh, for me as well. <laughs> so, all right. Let's get back to the ranking because we oof, we still got a while to go. We got a few to go. So... All right, so we just looked up Happy Trust, which I guess was a lot. I didn't even actually really. I just saw it was like a book digital library. Okay, so yeah, interesting. I've never used it. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Happy Trust. If anyone has, let me know. Um, so, but yeah, what even is this? I didn't know until I just Googled it. All right, Digital Brazil. I have never used this website. I've heard of it, um, but I've you know I've never really done any serious research in Brazil. The only that I have is the community of Recife, Brazil, in the 17th century, which was a very short period, and pretty much all of those records are held by the Dutch. So, you know, I access the records for that stuff through uh, Dutch archive websites. Um, Heritage Quest. Now, I have used Heritage Quest. Uh, like here and there over the years, I always think of Heritage Quest as like the library <laughs> software thing. I know there's a lot more to it, um, but I've used it very little. Um, I do remember the few times I did use it, it felt very clunky, very difficult to use. Um, hopefully I'm not mixing this up with something else that's like named Quest, but I'm pretty sure this is what I'm thinking of. 
And, uh, you know, it, it had a good amount of stuff, but I think especially when I was using it, I was focused on just my family tree stuff and maybe like other Jewish trees and it didn't have much there for it. Um, so it's been a while since I've used it. So I, yeah, I honestly, I'll probably put this on F tier. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's good. And then internet archive another another website that's not really a genealogy website just more of a website that kind of has a lot of genealogy uses to it sort of but i mean this is one that i i feel like i've never really used for genealogy really um i mean i you, you could use it i guess i i don't know if anyone uses internet archive a lot for genealogy let me know but i definitely i feel like this is one that kind of falls F tier as well. I'm going to put Heritage Quest at the top of this, though. Um, put some eagles there, yeah. So, yeah. All right. I found some super crazy, surprising stuff on Internet Archive. Interesting. Let me let me know, like, what? Oh, you already said. Photographs of people and locals especially. Interesting. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to look, look into that and see. Um... Yeah, because it's, I mean, that's one of those websites that I just feel like I've never really thought that much about using for genealogy. Oh. All right. Irish Newspapers Archives. I mean, I've never used it. I've never heard of it before, but I mean, it's very obvious what it is. So I don't, you know, I don't want to say what even is this because I, I know what it is. But yeah, I've, I've never used it. I probably should because there are some Irish family trees that I have researched. Um, which I feel like with a lot of those, like I end up going using find my past. Um, but even then, like the Irish research I've done has been very minimal and yeah, but I probably should use it more. All right. Jewish gen. Now Jewish gen for me, this is definitely going to be an A or S tier. I am using it every day, uh, constantly on it. Um, the people that are running the website, uh, most especially Abraham Grohl, just doing amazing things. The website, they had, you know, for a while there was very clunky, very difficult to use. Still not the most straightforward, but they did a big overhaul and it's a lot easier to use than it was. Um, there are a lot of functionality to it. And the biggest thing is if you're doing Jewish research, it's kind of becoming the central place to be able to find stuff. Um, and you know, one of the things he's doing is making it so that, you know, getting collaborations with all sorts of researchers and archives and other companies and stuff to have it so that, you know, if someone's researching Jewish genealogy, they can go on Jewish gen and then find all sorts of stuff that might link them to search elsewhere. If that's a better place. Um, they also are constantly adding tons of stuff, working on all sorts of digitization stuff. There are different divisions known as SIGs, special interest groups, which are especially running a lot of different stuff so like Ukraine SIG. I know recently just did a whole lot of transcribing and uh, uploading of stuff. Granted, one of the downsides is they sometimes use um, like uh, third party translation and transcription groups, which will be like, I think for the recent one, they used a group from India which then causes issues in the transcriptions because, you know, not only are you dealing with someone who their main language is something completely different than the two, the one language that they're translating to from to, and yeah, it just get, it's very complicated, um, you know, dealing with that kind of stuff, you know, transcribing from Hebrew to, you know, English or, you know, American or not American letters, but, you know, Roman letters. And then, yeah, it just causes issues. So, I'll put, oh, yeah, I'll put it A tier. I think it's a strong A tier. Um, I'm wondering if I should reorder any of these. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a very good A tier. I think for them to kind of go up to S tier, I feel like if they improve the usability of the site just a tad, because um, it is kind of clunky. It is kind of hard to find some stuff that you're looking for. And it'd be nice to have a bit more of advanced tools when it comes to the searching on Jewish Gen, but it's pretty good. Now, JRI Poland is kind of a funny one to have with Jewish Gen. Granted, 
you know, JRI Poland is technically a separate thing from Jewish Gen, but I think all of their databases are searchable through Jewish Gen. So I've never really used JRI Poland directly, but I also could be wrong about, you know, there might be more available with it. Um, you know, that Jewish Gen just doesn't offer. Like probably, I think maybe the search is different on GARI polling, but I really don't use it much, especially with Jewish Gen. And most of the Jewish research that I've ever done hasn't really even gone into Poland. Um, you know, so I've really done very little G uh, Jewish Polish research. So I know, um, I'm going to put a D tier because I have used it a bit. I I've used it more than all, well, I haven't used more than Google, but Google just is down there because it's really not a genealogy website. All right. Um, let's see. Pure reggae. I've used Irish newspaper archives. The UI and UX is horrible. Yeah, user. The user experience on a lot of these websites, unfortunately, is very lacking, especially a lot of the websites that have been around for a while. You know, one of those ain't broke, don't fix it sort of mentalities with a lot of these websites so i don't know if that's the case with the irish newspaper archives but yeah all right library of congress now this is a website that i probably use a couple of times a month or so uh, not a ton honestly you know a lot of the search a lot of the use i get out of library of congress is for my youtube video stuff like finding you know, stuff that's in the public domain, that's history stuff, you know, to show his B-roll videos and stuff. Or, um, but, you know, I have done a little bit of researching through Library of Congress, and it is really useful just in, you know, that there's so much stuff that is just so unique that can be hiding in there that you just have no clue about. Um, now, in terms of the user experience and, you know, how user-friendly it is, I would say that, you know, it definitely, there's a, a little bit to be desired um the search of it actually i don't know what it is but something about the way that it functions reminds me of ancestry before the recent up the the most recent update they did with the, how the search uh matches look like i don't know if people remember what it looked like before which i mean they changed this years ago at this point at least three or four years if not five or longer um so yeah, I'm not sure, but with the Library of Congress stuff, it's certainly certainly interesting. Not not a genealogy website necessarily, but definitely definitely useful. And I mean, I use it a lot, and I've found some really really cool, unique stuff through there. So I'm I'm gonna put that C tier. I think that'll not not only a C tier, but it's gonna be it's gonna be the high end of our C tier. So, all right, Matricula. What even is this? I have no clue. Matricula. No, not matriculation. Matricula genealogy. Here. Oh, funny. Share screen. Okay, welcome to Matricula. Find church registers from various European countries, Austria, Germany, Poland. Yeah, so I mean, basically, research areas that I have not really gone into. So interesting. I think that's one of the, one of the fun things, though, about doing a tier list like this is not only are you kind of forced to learn about stuff, but then you can actually find stuff that you might not have known about before. Okay, so my heritage. Now, my heritage, um, obviously, we have to not consider any of the DNA stuff like we did with the Ancestry. And this is a website that I probably am not on as much as a lot of people might think. Honestly, I use my I use my heritage so little that when I went to go log into it the other day it had automatically logged me out. And I think that they only do that if you've like been out for like months. Um, so they, you know, they, they have their two big things obviously are the family tree software and the records database searching. And 
they have unique records nobody else has um a lot of it kind of leaning towards the areas that i think that their dna database also represents that isn't as well represented elsewhere eastern europe and things like that um but i i i've never really enjoyed their search function i always find it a little bit clunky and um i you know even with their family tree stuff like it's just i don't know it's just like knowing that they own genie and that they've taken it seems like they've taken some of the stuff out of genie to use on my heritage but not all of it and then like most of the stuff they aren't using is all the stuff that like made genie amazing in my opinion and then they're using the stuff from genie that's like man um so it you know it good it's it's got a good amount of stuff in it but honestly i think this is gonna be a b tier you know it's 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 good but it's not not great <laughs> so okay all right next natural archives of australia never used it i have not done much australian research and most of the australian research i've done is on facebook finding the family members of mine living there currently <laughs> so all right now that i let's see canada um wait what is, is i don't know what this website is obviously it's canadian records is it just called canada or is it something else and they, they don't put the name in there like what what is it and of course i get to this one right after brian from how we got here leaves because he might know but does any does anyone know i'm guessing that the, all right let's see maybe maybe i can find it. canada genealogy see if i can find that what looked like some sort of a maple leaf something talk about a bad way to have your company name though does anyone know does anyone know like scrolling through images and stuff right now seeing if i can find that logo i don't know anyone chat say anything no 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 or at least no one said anything about it <laughs> so yeah uh what even is this i i have not done a lot of canadian uh research except for uh, the research that I did on Matt Baker. Um, that was the most in-depth I've ever done in genealogy research. Now I have done research, wait, did I, Canadian, I don't, genealogy research. I have, the research in Matt Baker was the useful charts, Matt Baker, was the most I've done in Canadian genealogy research, but I have done Canadian other research into genealogy connected to Canada um, but I definitely never use that website and part of me is kind of wondering is that supposed to be like Ancestry Canada but I think I don't think it is because I feel like Ancestry Canada probably just says Ancestry and then Canada underneath it okay all right let's uh, get back all right so newspaper archive now this is actually this is you know I know what it is it's a website I've known about, and I think I've gone on there once or twice, but I, re I really don't remember it that well. I'm, I'm actually gonna, well, newspaper archive. If I remember correctly, this is the one that I think, it felt like it just cost too much for what you got. Um, wow. so yeah it's it's a newspaper article but maybe it's maybe it's just canadian newspapers or something no texas uh, all right yeah i mean i guess newspapers i guess maybe is this a world newspaper if anyone knows let me uh let me know Uh, am I related to Curiel family too? I don't know. 
maybe um, I'd have to look back through my uh, ancestry and see if I have a Curiel family in my ancestry. Because uh, my Sephardi tree, I mean, it opens up to where I have, you know, thousands of, of known ancestors with Spanish and Portuguese surnames. So, but I, I don't, maybe not because I don't remember. Um, I'd like to know about how to go about getting old marriage records and baptismal birth records from England when you live in the States. I mean, the way that I've done it, although I guess, I don't know if this is just London, but I think it's the whole uh, UK, England, whatever, um, is uh, the GRO, um, the General Registry Office. Yeah. And they actually just did a recent update. Do they... They don't have GRO in there. That's a website they should have in this list. Um, but they, that's a real difficult website. That website, GRO would be like D tier for sure. Um, but yeah, if you do the GRO website, the General Register Office, this is the uh, best way to order that kind of stuff so all right um, let's get back to the ranking i'm gonna try to it's <laughs> more three three hours and 15 minutes i'm gonna try to try to get this uh done before the four hour mark and if i haven't done it by the four hour mark i think i'm just gonna throw stuff in, the last stuff in but i think we'll go through stuff pretty quickly so yeah, newspaper archive never used. Newspapers.com. Um, that one I'm gonna put up in. You know, I use this one all the time. It's so useful, and most especially in the sense of just finding the story. So I mean, it, kind of like any newspaper websites, you know, it does that. But I guess for me, newspapers.com. I love the uh, search functionality that they have on it. I feel like it's decently user friendly, not completely. I know I've had some times where it's like it it gets clunky and it glitches out or something and it'll do weird stuff. And yeah, but it, I think it's, it's a great way to figure out a lot of stuff and just the ability to clip and connect stuff to your ancestry tree instantly makes it really easy. So I'm fighting whether it should be A or B tier but I think it's going to be a B tier. I think it's going to be a B tier. Um, you know what? No, it's not a B tier. It's going to be an A tier, but at the end of the A tier, I think that that makes sense. That makes sense. So next one, Arpen Archiven, another one of the Dutch websites. Now this is one that I used to use a lot more, not as much anymore, just because of the fact that a lot of it is now available uh through ancestry and elsewhere um but open archive and also does a lot of they take information from some of the other archive websites so like i know i go on arp and archive and, and i'll find a lot of stuff linking me back to the amsterdam archives which that website i'm on all the time so with open archive and, it is a good website i haven't used it as much it is kind of clunky from you know what i remember um and it's actually is it different than open archive yeah open archive is oh wait oh they must have changed or something yeah that's different all right so open archive in let's share so you all can see so yeah so open archive in um you know it's a decent site we'll do here let's uh we'll look for my my fourth great grandfather abraham nunez vaz who was born about 1799 so we've got you know a little bit of manipulation that we can do we've got these options down here where you can filter by year what's the role of the person you're looking for the place they lived what type of events etc so like here we go population register which is the Bavalking registers. And basically what this is going to tell me is that's on the, <laughs> just like I said, the Amsterdam city archives. 
So it'll show me this page, but the issue is, is if I want to start, you know, going page by page, like some of us do, it's not gonna, we're not gonna be able to find that. But this is, uh, yeah, this is the Bavalking register right there. My third great grandfather, Raphael. And then up here, his parents or his father, Abraham, and then his stepmom, Rachel Coelho. So, yeah. All right. So that's Open Archive. So, great website. Kind of, you know, would be nice to have a little bit of an update to the look and feel of it. Um, I certainly don't use it as much as I used to. Uh, but uh, then again, I'm also pulling from some of the websites they're pulling from and then pulling from websites that's pulling from them. So it's like, I don't know, they've middleman themselves to the point of like, I don't use them much. But I think they are pretty good. Um, and I definitely, I'll put the, yeah, I'm going to put this right there in D tier. I think that's a pretty good D tier. Or you know what? No, 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 I can't put it. We're going to switch these. We're going to switch those. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Let's, oh, well, I need to close this out. Close this out. All right. Let's see what's chat. <laughs> what, what's chat up to? Wow, you guys messaged a lot since I last looked. Um, okay. DNA website, illustrative DNA. I feel like I've heard of it, but I haven't used it. So I'll have to, I'll look into that. Hmm. Illustrative DNA. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll look into that. Yeah, I have not heard of it. Another website that claims to have the largest database of this and that and whatever. Let's see what services they offer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to leave you all out in the cold. Let's uh, make sure that you can see this. Illustrative DNA. Obviously a UK-based website. And... Uh, What are the features, though? <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing for me with these DNA websites is, are there is there a genealogical usefulness to it? Otherwise, for me, it's like what, you know, I, I, I'm not big into the health and trade stuff. And like, there is an interest to it. But I think for me, once I, you know, once you kind of realize that it's so much better to go to a, you know, geneticist and all of that, it's like, yeah, if I notice anything in my results... I'll, uh, you know, go to a geneticist or, you know, genetic counselor, but all right, this, yeah, <laughs> I'm not getting good vibes from this website. It feels very, you know, services in fact are the same, you know? Yeah. All right. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Um, Ooh, yes, Swedish Jewish ancestors. That's that's very interesting. That's definitely a uh, unique group of uh, amongst the Jews. Uh, now, this question: getting baptismal birth records from Slovakia. Not sure. This is where the wiki tree, uh, or not the wiki tree, the uh, Family Search wiki comes into play, where you'll just want to look at what's available in Slovakia and. Yeah, see if it's uh, if you can get anything from uh, Slovakia, but I guess you probably there's probably also a lot of stuff you got to figure out in terms of where your family live, in terms of present day. You know, is, was it you know Czech Republic or something else? Or, you know. um, oh, Magnus, thank you. The Canada one is the government of Canada. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Why it was like just called Canada? Because I was like, wait, is this? just canada but i guess if it's the government of canada yeah it's just canada so uh, thank you for that um i see some people answering people's questions some other yeah i i wasn't ignoring i just was not focused on the chat <laughs> so 
And then Gina, I think we might be related very, very far from the Alexander family. They're related to the Coens, Coella, Noons. It's certainly possible. Uh, the, the thing with Spanish surnames, I feel like it's just so many, so many common ones. Um, and then obviously Cohen, that's like the most common Jewish name. It's basically Smith, you know, for Jews. So, all right, let's get back to the Rankins now that I've caught up with chat. So, all right, reclaim the records. Now, this is going to be a hard one to rate because the thing I love about reclaim the records has nothing really to do with their website as much as what they do in suing the government for freedom of information and just, you know, being amazing people that way. Uh, I absolutely love the team uh, at Reclaim the Records. Very good friends with a lot of the folks on there. Um, a lot of amazing genealogists on, there, on that team and just, yeah. But when it comes to their website, I am not on it that much. I mean, you know, not not exactly the easiest website to use in terms of when you're doing database searches but you know they make everything they pull they make available completely for free to everybody so a lot of the stuff they pull ends up being available on ancestry and family search and elsewhere um so it's pretty you don't really need to use their website to find it um and then also it's kind of you know it is not the most straightforward of search databases but you know it's not like that's their point is being a search database their point is to make the data available um so because of that you know because they make the data available if this was you know how amazing are the genealogists at this company this would be s plus plus tier um but in terms of the genealogy website itself and its genealogical usefulness uh, I hate to say it, but it's it's going to be down here in the D tier. Um, I'm going to put it. I'll put it at the front of the D tier. You know, it's it nothing to do with them is what they actually do. It, this is more of a ranking of the website, the gene their genealogy website, and in terms of how useful is it for genealogists to conduct research. And you know, it, you can, but it's not the greatest. Okay, Roots Ireland. Now, this was a website I was on just a little bit for one of the um, episodes. That Hi, we I'm Joanna, and I'm Clea. Welcome to the Home oh, House. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't offend anybody by saying that. But, all right, Roots Ireland. Um, I used it a little bit. I was doing research on an episode that will be coming up. Uh, where Daniel Loftus and some other Irish researchers also assisted me on the research. Um, and I don't really remember much of it. I, you know, I remember going to it, kind of looking through it, and then that was kind of about it. So it really just isn't never used, even though I have used it. I mean, it's, I've used it once or twice ever, and then not for that long. Um, Scotland's people... I, I, I understand what it is. It's definitely Scottish ancestry. Never used it. And then this, uh, this looks like it's some sort of Polish, Czech area, sort of, you know, Central European thing. I have not used it. I kind of almost want to say what even is this because, yeah, I, I hate to say, yeah, yeah, because I've, I've just never used it, but I'm guessing that this is a Polish website. So if anyone's used it, let me know. Um, I feel like I have a lot of people who watch me who do research in Poland and Czech and Slo. Yeah. So, I mean, Jordan just asked about Slovakia. So, you know, not, not exactly Poland, but, you know, about the same area. Um, okay. Trove. Isn't this, is this treasure trove, whatever? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I am not familiar with this website either. Trove Genealogy. National Library of Australia. Ah, that's why I, that's why I uh, had never heard of it. So yeah, that's that's a. Uh, oh, yeah, whoops. So I, I'm gonna put what even is this? Because I had to Google it to figure it out, and I had no no clue. Uh, so. Um, 
National Archives of the UK. I've never used the website. I know about it. I just kind of like I was saying before with the UK stuff, well, I've done UK research. I've done so little of it and so focused on London in such a short period of time that I really don't touch, end up touching a lot of these other websites or going to them or, you know, so yeah. All right. National Archives. Now this is a site I, I feel like I'm falling on all the time often finding results through google search it's not really a website i'm often like oh let me go to the national archives and pull stuff up i don't really remember ever finding anything genealogically useful in it necessarily um but i did find it was you know it, it's you know a national archives sort of thing so it's like got a lot of various things to help understand the history and all of that um you know, let me pull up the website, National Archives. So, uh, you know, maybe I'm just not using it to its full potential. So if anyone, uh, you know, feels like, it, you know, it's a lot better. Um, but, you know, for me, I feel like this is, it's, I don't know, a lot of the stuff that you can find on here that is genealogically relevant is stuff that I think is pretty much already up on sites like ancestry and stuff like that um so it's more of a you know getting the nuances of the history and the story than the genealogy so yeah so that never used all right we're down we're down to uh oh wait no not never used what am i talking about uh that one national archives I'm going to put it at the end of the end of the D tier. Okay. The U S gen web project. Now, if this is the site I'm thinking of, this is one that looks like it's straight out of the nineties. Maybe they updated it though. Gen. Keeping free genealogy on the internet. Um, I don't know if this is uh if it was if it was the website i was thinking of they have definitely upgraded but no free genealogy for 25 years that must be it must be um, must be the one i'm thinking of so yeah this is one that uh i I haven't used in years, so I, I I think I wanna just put it down in the other one. But if I remember correctly, this like this was one of those sites that was around the time when genealogy forums were the big thing. Um, so I from what I remembered, I thought this was gonna be I thought this was one of those ones that was kind of like that where it's like a lot of old forums and a lot of different things that people have posted and then just links to different stuff but i could be wrong so if anyone if anyone knows if anyone uses uh uses us gen web a lot so all right so yeah so there we go oh my gosh that only took three and a half hours everybody thank you thank you so much for all of you who have been sticking around so, Oh wait, what am I doing? Why did uh, why did that screen go away? We, we need to look at the rankings. So there we go. Okay, <laughs> so that's the final ranking. So, I mean, it definitely makes sense because it's like as I go through and look at it, it's like yeah, use it all the time, 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 all the time. A good bit, a good bit, a good bit. Yeah, from time to time, from time to time, from time to time, a little bit here and there. Not much, not much, not much, not much, not much, not much. Not really at all, sort of, except for Google, and then yeah. So yeah whoo yeah uh yes maven this was a mar marathon stream so also it has us gen web but not canada gen web yeah i don't know if they have a canada gen web so uh let's see when will you do another answer your reddit question so i i i have been trying to figure out a plan of what i want to do 
And one of the things I want to do with streaming is I figure if I start setting certain times a week that I do stuff, that that's best for me just to kind of keep myself in check. Uh, Because otherwise, you know, if I don't plan stuff, I might be like, ah, I'll just do it next week. Uh, Which is unfortunately one of the things that happens or has happened over the past year with a lot of my videos is, you know, well, I'll get to it next week. Oh, I'll get to it next week. I'm too busy, too busy. And the next thing I know, it's like months past. Uh, So what I've been thinking for a schedule of things is I've been considering doing a stream every Friday at this time, two o'clock. And what it would be is one week would be a stream on the main channel. The next week would be a stream on the reaction channel, which would be one of the Reddit question uh, video or live streams. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking is like every other week. That way for me, it's not like every week I'm just doing the same thing. Um, and then also, you know, for these main streams, I'll be doing all sorts of various stuff. Uh, like one of the things I want to do for the main stream, and I've mentioned this before, is building family trees for famous uh, historical figures from scratch you know so basically just starting with you know the basic information about them and then going and pulling up the records and looking up the records on screen and all of that fun stuff um and then beyond that i will be doing uh, a lot of gaming streaming streams which would just be random and then i've been also thinking i'll probably do other types of streams on this main channel and on the reaction channel um at different times maybe like kind of special events so you know every friday at 2 p.m this time just the reason why i decided that for friday 2 p.m it seemed to be the one that just worked best for most people so you know most people in the u.s if they are you know working it you know at least it's kind of middle of the day a lot of the people in europe you're looking at night and then for everyone in kind of australia new zealand and out you know eastern part of the hemisphere um you know it is early early morning for you but it's at least not so early that it's like completely unreasonable uh but i'll be changing times up and stuff so yeah so next friday hopefully um you'll see me basically i'll be putting out the stream announcements like i have where you know i put up the stream so it shows you this is coming up so uh Let's see what other people say. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sajuka. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, had a great time listening to the stream and playing cities at the same time. Jared, I blame you for this. Oh my gosh, you know, as soon as I finish this stream, I'm going to be walking my dogs, eating myself dinner, and then probably playing City Skylines most of the rest of the night. I have been obsessed with that game since I got it the other day. And yeah, I'll, I'm guessing the majority of my streams on the gaming channel will be City Skylines. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um the stream with building the family tree would be really cool. Yeah, one thing I'm thinking I might do too is I might do polls uh, as well. So it'd be, you know, historical figure family tree building and you won't know who I'm building until we get to the uh, stream because I'll poll the, uh, the the chat. So, yeah. Uh, Highlander, thank you very much. And once again, thank you very much for uh, becoming a member today. Appreciate that. You'll, um, you won't will you be able to see your name coming up in the... Uh, um, uh, the next video on Monday, the NFKRZ uh, reaction, but you'll see it in the other upcoming videos. So, yeah, and that's one of the other benefits. If anyone wants to become a YouTube member or a Patreon patron, which helps me out greatly, especially now that this is, you know, this is how I make my income. Um, if you do that, help support me, but you also get all sorts of access to stuff. And one of those things is I give you a shout out at the end of uh, my videos. Well, I don't say, do a shout out, but you end up on the screen. Uh, got to be on last week while at work. Nice. Thank you, DJ's Variety Channel. And thank you, Carol, as well. So, yeah, I'm so, I, I gotta say, I'm so happy I ended up doing this under four hours. I was starting to look at the clock like, oh boy, if I end up taking over four hours, that's just crazy. But yeah, this is a marathon of a stream. I mean, I think the first stream I did was an hour or two, and then, yeah, yeah, two hours seems to be a good, 
two hours seems to be a really good amount to to hit for the streams um it is it's not too too terrible doing this uh you know doing three and a half hours so you know it's kind of funny thinking though three and a half hours like i could just uh if i took a plane flight it'd be, it'd be the entire plane flight flying from like here to arizona or something so yeah might wait until next year to do patreon you know no obligations to do patreon i completely appreciate everybody who supports me even just by watching um but yeah anyone that can do patreon i certainly do love that because it helps helps me support myself so um yeah so this is this is the the final final ranking I'll, uh, I think I'm going to snapshot this and I'll be posting it on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. So, you know, uh, let me know yours and especially on Twitter for everyone on Twitter. Uh, when I post mine, be sure to either quote tweet or reply and post your tier rankings as well. Uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun to be able to see. So, um, you know, once again, I really appreciate everybody being here, uh, for everybody that is on, um, you know, twitch or facebook or youtube or wherever you are be sure to follow like subscribe or whatever it is that you do and if you're on any of those other platforms as well if you can do that as well that'll help me out a lot um but yeah this was absolutely amazing and i uh had an absolutely great time so once again thank you all very much i feel like i'm seeing the numbers starting to go back up now that i'm saying my goodbyes so yeah just uh just over three hours and 40 minutes so Awesome. Um, be sure to keep an eye out Monday. I'll have the next reaction coming up to uh, NFKRZ and you'll all be able to see the new background. So, very cool. So, I'm Jared Rossagini Vlogger. I'm out.